So dad was walking down, uh, driving down the street, and the transmission goes out on his van. And he had to pull into a gas station, and he calls the the company that sold him the van, J.D. Byrider on Rivers Avenue here in... Uh, Across from Trident um, Technical. Across from Trident Technical College. And they tell dad, we ain't no towing service. Oh yeah, well, I'll look in the phone book, and now they're trying to say that maybe they can't honor the warranty. They'll try to fix the van. So right now, Dad's looking at being out of a vehicle. And I ain't got, I don't have fourteen hundred dollars to pay for new transmission, so it'll just have to sit a JD by rider. So that's where we are right now, at a gas station, waiting for the tow truck that that I had to find. I found somebody on Craigslist. Thank you for him found somebody to come tow us. Now it's all about if J B JD By Rider cares enough to actually fix Dad's van or if they've gotten enough out of him that they can just junk the van or fix it and resell it. Yeah, because uh, they'll get it back if they don't if they don't fix it. And I'll just be without a car, I'll be walking everywhere. I give up. You know, this is like a scene from Final Destination and I'm not comfortable with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Cigarettes, gas, cars, tow truck, van, kids. <laughs> Going up now. Alright, you go watch out there. Come on. Come on. Been a good one, Mike. It ain't gone yet. They call him on JD by rider. Are you saluting? You always salute a fallen soldier, man. Is he gonna get it on that truck? Man, I don't know. Hey, go in with your brother. She has a girl. She has a Did she fart? Yeah. Was that? She walked right into it and breathed it in. There goes Old Faithful, Dad. Bye, man. Hey, look. What is this, breakdown car there or something? <laughs> Everyone breaking down today. Well, a van's on the way to JD by Rider. I'll know tomorrow if they're gonna honor their warranty and fix it or not. If they don't honor the warranty, then they got a van. That's that's it. Simple as that? Simple as that. Only way to vote. This has been okay, it was what, two o'clock? Yep. It is now seven o'clock. And we're still dealing with the van. What a day. Ugh. Oh my god! God, you're lucky it's so noisy out here. My god! Alright, I'll call you. Man, the child safety locks on this car. <laughs> Gotta love child safety locks. How is he gonna open the door and you ain't, Dad? That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Look at it, folks. Y'all, you get right here, raise toys. Let them know if they did a good job for Grandpa. Give them a call. Tell me they did a good job for Grandpa. Damage free towing. Damage, damage free. free towing all day, every day, 24-7. Well, you can't damage that no more than it already is. But... <laughs> Thank you, brother. Take care. Not a problem. You too now. You take yeah, care man. of my baby. Thanks a lot, man. He quoted you a good price, too. Huh? Cheapest price we were able to get.
got a question, Dad. What's up, buddy? Why is it that he had to open the door for me and you didn't? Don't show my candy wrap. What is this? Candy. Candy man, candy man, candy man. <laughs> yeah, you want to do a candy man in the mirror prank? Uh, no. Okay, so what do you want to tell me? I was thinking. I don't have no van right now, right? Right. What if? What if the fucking zombies came true and they were running up and down my motherfucking street and they're biting and killing people and eating their brains and shit? I got no way to get out of here and your fat ass ain't coming to get me. Oh, I'd come and get you. Yeah, right. You live fat fuck. You saved your fat ass first. But if the zombies were out there and they were biting old people, I'd be dead. So what else, So what other what ifs are there? What if vampires like in True Blood turned out to be real and they came out this week? I ain't got no van to get away! Nope, you gotta stay here and eat. What if, what if they rams blow the bomb up here oh, man. in Charleston? I got no way to get out now. I'm stuck. It's true. You know, I'm really scared. What if an obsessed fan comes to your house? What am I gonna do? I can't get my van to drive away. You gonna run up the street and get away? They gonna I, chase after you? My big fat ass running, you gotta be fucking kidding. <laughs> so without a van, you are subjected to dying. <coughs> I'm gonna die right here in this chair in my room. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Go, go through a walk in. Go through a walk in. All right, so this will, this will be what'll this be. This will be what happened if you came in. All right, you better make this look good. This is what you go find. Okay, I'm just gonna go check on Dad. <gasps> Dad, oh my God! You son of a bitch! What? What are you trying to do? What are you doing? Yeah, that scared me. I thought that's what we were doing. I was gonna find you dead. You damn near do it! I got here screaming at me, motherfucker! Hey, Dad, I know you love almonds. Don't you stop my goddamn almond joy! You son of a bitch! Goddamn! I love these. Ah! Don't do it! What else? What else could you not do if the if something were to happen? Cause you got a van. Can't go date no women. If mom were to come over right oh, now. Oh goddamn! That's scary. That motherfucker would scare me to death. If that goddamn hag bitch came in here, I would run. I'd run. I had a plan for this month for you to wake up with mom next to you, but she don't want to do the video. I don't either. I won't do it. Apparently, she's done talking to you. I'm done talking to that bitch. She's fucking history, man. I'm through with that bitch. All these people keep mentioning her on my goddamn wall. I keep blocking them. I ain't married to that bitch no more. I ain't married to that bitch no more. Is he in the bathroom? Happened to my goddamn TV! Whoa. Whoa! What the fuck? God damn! The fuck's going on in here? The fuck's going on? The good reaction from the bride, Melissa Fulton's similar silhouette with a more conservative. That's ain't funny no more. They got damn! What the fuck is going on? What the fuck? Ah! Ah! Goddamn! Motherfucker! <laughs> you motherfucker! Oh, it's God damn! It was so hard to sit across <laughs> that bed. Oh, goddamn! 
Thought about saying hello, you in the bathroom, took advantage. Look where I had to squeeze my fat ass. <laughs> that ain't funny, man. I thought I didn't want what was going on in here. What the fuck is that on your wall? God, it doesn't take anything. <laughs> Why are you so judged? Oh, God, 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 God. Oh, Stop God. it now. Stop it. You know, back back in the 70s, I, I used to prank a lot of people, you know. And one of our biggest thing was we would take a bag, we'd go down, we'd get the dogs in the neighborhood, we'd dig their shit, you know, put them in bags. Ooh, Grandma Green told me the story. And, shut up. And we would, <laughs> I would light these bags, man, and on the front door, ring the doorbell, run like a motherfucker. Some bitch come to the door, see that flaming bag of shit? Try to stomp it out, you know? Shit all over his foot, shoe, whatever the fuck he was wearing. So one night, we, we, me, me and a couple of buddies, man, we, we lighten bags of shit and put them on, on doorsteps, you know, and, and we let one boy, we started running, well, we got about halfway down the street, and all of a sudden, this, this man stopped us. Hey! Hey, boys! Stop a minute! Now, this old motherfucker, about 50 years old, done come up to us. He said, I saw what y'all did. He said, y'all lit that bag, and them people, poor people had to, had to come out here and stop that. You know, y'all boys are wrong. I tell you now, you go home! Or I'm gonna tell you daddies. I said, man, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I ran off, man. We, we got some more bags of shit and we lit them, you know. <laughs> Where are you getting all this shit from? Well, we, we spent about a week collecting all the dogs in the neighborhood. <laughs> God, where are you storing it at? Uh, in front of my house. His, his house stunk anyway. <laughs> but anyway, so we got through for the night, you know, and I went home and. I was sitting there, Mom was saying, well, how was, your, how was your Halloween? I said, Mom, it was a lot of fun. Me and the guys just walked around the neighborhood talking to other women, you know? Other women? We talked to women. Anyway, damn doorbell rang. And here's my daddy, he in a wheelchair, and, and, and he was sitting in his room watching TV, so Mama went to the door. Mom opened the door, and there was a bag of shit burning on the motherfucking thing. God damn, Mama got out there and she's stomping that shit. And, 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 and I'm saying, oh, God damn, hell nah. You ain't, you ain't, you, well, some sick ended. I thought one of my friends did it. I was about to ask, was it one of your friends? No, it wasn't one of my friends anyway. So Mama done stomped out and got shit all over her nightgown and stuff. You know, she was mad anyway. So the next day I'm at the store and I see that 50 year old motherfucker. He getting him a drink out the damn drink bar. He laughing. Ha, 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 ha. I said, what are you laughing at? He said, how'd you enjoy your bag of shit on the door, motherfucker? <laughs> I said, you crazy old motherfucker. He said, I told you. I told you Payday was a bitch. Ha, 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 ha. You son of a bitch. My mama had to stomp that shit out. He said, yeah, she did. But somebody else's mama had to stamp out yo shit. Two years later, the motherfucker died of a heart attack. Fuck you, you damn shit. Oh Door stepping <laughs> button motherfucker. Fuck you. Burn in hell. Making my mama step on yo shit. Man, here, take this motherfucker. You think it was human shit? And it was human shit. <laughs> uh, I'm okay. not gonna do the vlog, Michael. I wanna go home. Dad, just do the vlog. Michael, I wanna go fucking home. You said you had a vlog to do out here. But you kept me out here three guns, and there's my cab. You did not call a cab. Okay, just play it cool. You're not hailing that cab. You're not hailing it. I called him because... Just let him go. Good God, Michael, the cab's coming to get me. You're over Bridget, you're leaving my Bridget. You go pay for it. No, okay. we ain't. Okay, what was your story you had to tell? Uh, I don't even remember now. That cab is driving slow. He's waiting on me. I'll be back. I'll talk to you later, Mike. Your dad. I'm going home. After the vlog, I swear to God, we'll take you home. God, Michael, you now nah, ain't got to ride home. You fuck me every chance you get. Whoa. God damn, I lost my motherfucking... What you lose? I lost my flashlight. Oh, I have it. Okay, so what was the vlog you wanted to tell about the battery? What's part time? There were three blind mice. No, that ain't it. That ain't it. Come on with this. Be serious.
One time when I was young, mom and daddy brought us out here one night. You used to like to come to the battery, you know, at nighttime? Especially in the summertime, it was hot. And it was about the same area, right by this cannon. And we walk in, you know, and I'm playing. I'm a little fella, I'm about 10 year old, 9, 9 10 year old. And I come running down to the battery where the man is over there. You can't get him there. But there was a man in a Confederate uniform right here. And like you saw a person standing there? No, honestly, I saw he was he was standing here. I mean, full flesh. And he was standing here, and he had this damn thing that used to, like you would light these motherfuckers with, you know? And I thought it was some kind of reenactment, you know? So I stand over there and I watch him, and he's just doing this. Back and forth. He was just standing, then also he just stood there. I mean, he had the uniform, the hat, everything. So I said, damn. Why did I say damn? But I was too little to say damn. I said, Mama, Daddy, look at the guy. They're having a war here. Dad said, they ain't having no war where? I said, I got cannon over there. He said, how do you know? I said, because there's a man with a, there's a Confederate soldier standing there with a, with a thing lighting the cannon and blow, making it blow. Dad said, show me, son. Dad, we come around here. Wasn't nobody here. I st Daddy started asking people about it, and they said, well, ain't no Confederate soldier been around here. And one little old man came from over there. He says, you saw Private Jones. And I said, he was a Confederate soldier? So yeah, he was one of the Confederate soldiers that was shooting at Fort Sumter, right? And when Fort Sumter was firing back, the, the, the bomb blew up the cannon and he died. It blew him up. And they say, you can see him every now and then here lighting this cannon, shooting bombs over to Fort Sumter. True story. Now, can I go home now? Can I go home? Conrad Murray! Conrad Murray! You want to get two years for killing the most popular man in the world? Michael Jackson was an icon. He's dead because you Gave him the wrong shit. So you only spent two years in prison, which you didn't even go to prison. You read window licking bitch. I don't think he gave Michael Jackson the wrong shit. Shut up! I think like maybe Michael Jackson was an addict. But still, he's a doctor. He's a doctor. He should know better than to give somebody who doesn't need the Man, medicine. this is my blog, okay? You stay out of it. I was trying to correct you from a wrong opinion. I don't give a damn. Murray! I'm gonna end up getting her. She don't shut up, I'm gonna get her. Anyway, Conrad Murray, you spent two years in prison, which you didn't even go to prison. You spent two years in the county jail. The county jail. You didn't get broke over like no shotgun in the county jail. If you'd have gone to prison, your ass would have been bunked over and you'd have been tossing that salad, boy. Number two. You get out of jail, and you start pronouncing, I want my license back. I want to start treating people again. Are you fucking stupid? Are you retarded? What? You killed a man. But yet you want everybody to say, oh, it's all right, Conrad. You just come right on, and you can, you can, who the hell's going to trust you to treat them? Motherfucker, you ain't treating me. Yeah, old Dr. Kevorkian. So I ain't gotta call you, he ain't no goddamn doctor. I was calling him Dr. Kevorkian. Yeah, the first thing he did when he got out of jail was went and got two double-double cheeseburgers. He went and got what? They were called the double-double burgers. You went and got two, who bell paid for it? Your lawyer? You don't deserve to be out of prison. You killed an icon. You're causing his daughter to try to commit suicide. And it's all your fault. So, Murray, good luck with your life. I ain't calling you doctor because you ain't never going to be one. Call him Dr. Death. Dr. Death. That is your new name now, Conrad Murray. Dr. Death. Go kill some more people. You piece of shit. Turn that damn thing off. I'm done. So let's talk a minute. Why do you hate mice? 
They got diseases. That's the only reason? No, and I'm scared of them. So if you haven't seen it yet, what do you call that? Go to my channel and check out the video of the mouse hunt. What does it, what does it mean when you fear mice? What is yeah? You have a phobia for them? Yeah, bad. What? That's snakes. Mice and snakes. I will kill you. Snakes will eat a mouse for you. That's why we're getting because the goddamn mice will bring. How about that? We'll bring a snake in. Here. Oh hell no! You ain't gonna take my goddamn motherfucking house. I'll bring a snake to eat the mice. You ain't gonna take my motherfucking house. I'll get one from the. I'll kill you. I'll get from the. You would not kill me. I will kill you if you bring a snake around me. <laughs> Literally. Literally. I will take a goddamn knife and stab you in the fucking heart if you bring a motherfucking snake motherfucking around me. Do you motherfucking understand? When did your fears begin for snakes and mice? That's when I shot that fella. What? I never told you that story. No. Oh, when I shot the fella, brought the snake on the railroad track. What? To, well, that's another story. Why? I gotta hear this. What are you talking about? I was about 21. And I was working in a place that had a, this wrecking yard. And there was a railroad track. This dude from the, from the work with me at the day. And he, hey, look what I found. He put up out a black snake. He was dragging it behind him. And I told him, motherfucker, don't bring that snake over here. He said, oh, I ain't nothing but a black snake. Oh. I said, tell you that, motherfucker, you bring that snake any closer to me, I'm going to get my gun out of my car and I'm going to shoot you. The motherfucker wouldn't. He laughed. Ha, 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 ha. I got my 22 out and I shot him in the fucking leg. What? End of story. They call the police? End of story. <laughs> Wait, did you call? End of story. So that's how it. End of story. Should we put this online? End of story. Should I put this on the internet? It, I didn't kill him. <laughs> so somebody brought a. <coughs> contagious. <coughs> fucking might. One on the rail behind you. <laughs> Is it that bad for you? It's that bad. Don't do it. Well, I feel a mouse prank coming this month. I think you get hurt. Which one you want, mouse or snake? You'll get hurt either way. Well, one of them's happening. You're gonna get hurt. I'm gonna bring a snake in here for real. <laughs> and you're gonna get hurt. <clears throat> Straight up. I wouldn't do it. I'm that. telling you right now. I wouldn't do it. You will get hurt. <laughs> you bring a mouse or a snake around me, you will get hurt. I don't give a fuck if you're my son. I wouldn't give you a God Almighty. We'll get hurt. You would kill God. If he brought a snake or a sprat or a mouse around me, yes. <laughs> Jesus. I'm telling you that. Don't ever fucking try to scare me. Wait, what are your legs up for? I'm not taking a chance of running up my pants, right? Oh my God. Hey, do you remember we had rats? Oh my God, yeah. I moved. That's why we moved. That's a vlog I'm telling tomorrow. That's why we moved. Tomorrow? Watch as I tell the vlog of the time. That's why we moved? Yeah. We had rats. Well, we, we moved because when I woke up and I seen that goddamn rat staring me in the eyes at 3 o'clock in the morning on the goddamn counter, I figured he wanted the house more than I did. I rem this is the vlog I'm telling tomorrow. The time the rats took over. And they did. Do you want something for your feet? Fucking Willard. Do you want something? Here. I don't need that. I'm fine. You just gonna sit with your legs propped up? Are you going to hit the ground? Ah! God! This month is dedicated to Gobble Day. You know Gobble Day, that's the little turkey you throw at the plate and you give sit around the table and you give thanks for fuck that shit. What have you got to be thankful for this year? Let me see. You ain't got no jobs. Your health insurance is a shambles. You can't trust your politicians. Your preacher's trying to get more money out your ass. Rent's going up. Salaries are going down. You can't hardly afford to buy the bird to put on the table this year. But yet, what are you thankful for? I'm healthy. I got my health. Thank God, because if I get sick, I can't go nowhere. Where am I going to go, the doctor? Uh, yeah, uh, you see me free? No. Oh, well, let me go home and die. So this month is all about Thanksgiving. And I'm going to be talking about things that Thanksgiving's past when, when things were fun. Stuff that happened that, did we ever tell the story, Michael, about, about the captain cook-up? Uh, cook, of course we told that We story. told that one? Yeah. 
Got the entire porch on fire. Yeah. Oh, hell, I don't remember. You know, that's what happens when you get old, you start forgetting shit. There are a lot of good Thanksgiving memories we can tell this month. Oh, yeah. Had one one time. I used to live in Gaston, South Carolina. And there was a bike, they call them gangs, I guess, or bike clubs. They're like gangs. Gang is somebody to catch you on the side of the road and beat the fuck out you. This was a club, but they beat the fuck out you too. Okay? But they, they were called the Southern Vikings. And they were a good bunch of guys, and they had this fella that got hurt. He got in a wreck and got hurt on his bike, and they were having a fundraiser for him. And they heard about me because I was selling Confederate stuff and jewelry and peanuts and stuff like that. And so they came to me, would you like to sell? Yeah, I like to sell. Gonna cost you $35. Sure, man. How many people you got coming? Oh, we're gonna have two, three hundred people there. We got a live rock band. I said, okay, I'll try it. So I give them $35. So we set up, you know, and me and Michael, Michael's a little fuck, he was about that big. About that big around too. <laughs> you were fat, you know that, right? Of course. So, so, so we set everything up, you know, and the people, they come by. How much you want for your, your, your Confederate flag? $10, oh, that's too much money. How much you want for your Confederate shirt? $10, oh, that's too much money. Make a long story short, we made, Twenty-two dollars that day. No, we didn't. We were in the hole. Yeah, you had to pay thirty-five. I had to pay thirty-five, so we were in the hole dollars. But you know that was cool because may not made no money, but I made a lot of friends. Broke motherfuckers, but I made a lot of friends. But I made some good friends there. Man, I had one good friend named named Goat. Now y'all would have loved Goat. He was a big old guy, man. Had a little little goatee here, little tiny mustache. Ball his motherfucker. Had a little thing on the back of his hair sticking out, you know? Goat was so fucking creepy. If you ever heard about somebody that was certified crazy, that was Goat. And, and, then, and, then, and then, then I met a guy named Caesar. His real name was... I don't know his real name, but don't matter. Now, um... What are you doing? If I'm you want to know who Caesar you, is, hold on. I, gotta, I'll get I want to tell them something real quick. If you watch my vlog about the time that Dad got drunk and went to a, a biker's clubhouse, I named him Scuzz. That was Caesar. <laughs> so, why? You named him Scuzz? I didn't want to give his real name out because you told me threatening to kill him. <laughs> I'm going to go kill Caesar. Caesar was my best friend. Caesar was my buddy. I used to go into bars. Well, a little bit. Then, 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 there, was a, then, then there was a Steve. Oh, God. Cue ball. When was it cue ball? Eight ball. Eight ball. Eight ball. They call him eight ball. He was, hi there. My name is eight ball. But they were the nicest bunch of guys you ever met in your life, man. I, I remember one time back, I was hanging out. Okay, over. I don't understand. I'm failing to understand what the Southern Vikings have to do with Thanksgiving. I don't if you shut your fat ass mouth a goddamn minute, I'll get to it. Because that was the... Best motherfucking Thanksgiving we ever motherfucking had. Hey, Dad, I ain't the guy that robbed you. Oh man, you get away from me! You go away! Don't you get in my yard? Go away! <laughs> I'm right here, man. Go right away! Here. Go away, man! I ain't lying. Go away. He scares the fuck out of me, Michael. What's his name? I don't know his name. Actually. He laughing at me. Rightfully so. But anyway, what are you I, talking about again? I don't know. I was talking about damn Thanksgiving. I tell you what, I'll tell you more about the okay, best so Thanksgiving ever. I see you were introducing the Southern Vikings to us. Now I'm lost because of that. I'm, I don't know where I'm at now. Anyway, I tell you what, I'll tell you more about this tomorrow. All right, I'll tell you about the best Thanksgiving I ever had was with the Southern Vikings. Southern Vikings, and I'll tell you all about it tomorrow. Turn up. Oh, that's it. Go, go, go. So you promised to tell us the greatest Thanksgiving story of your life, I guess. So that was the one with Southern Vikings. The bike, the one we had at the Viking Clubhouse. We, that's right. You went with me, didn't you? That was the worst Thanksgiving. How come everywhere? How come everywhere I went, you were always up my ass. Uh, it don't matter where I went, you were right there, little fat, little fat. But anyway, we we went to the clubhouse that Thanksgiving morning, you know, because they invited me, you know, and I brought I brought some food, you know. You were the only one that brought food. I'm going to tell that, all right? Okay, Shut I don't up. Know if you remember the events that happened or not. 
Anyway, walk in the door, man. I hear I am. I got my food. I say, Happy Thanksgiving. Motherfucker sitting in the bar going, Fuck you. I said, Where I put my food? They say, Anywhere you want, si. you He said, You said, Dad sent this fucking turkey and a macaroni on the fucking pool table. <laughs> there was one place to put it. That should. There was no other food. That should have told you that they weren't having no thanks. I knew that, Michael. They, they, we had the only. Anyway, I walk. We, I, I tell the story. You tell yeah, the story. Go ahead. It was just fun to do it. Anyway, anyway, I, I, I walk in there. I set the turkey and the, and the macaroni on the on the pool table. You know, and and, and, and nobody else had food. I'm thinking, goddamn. Not only did I lose money yesterday. I gotta buy all the food for Thanksgiving too. These people, they getting up, they starting to grab my goddamn turkey and my macaroni and cheese. There ain't nothing else to eat. At least somebody could have brought some goddamn cranberry. But anyway, Caesar walked in. He look around. He said, wait a motherfucking minute. Pies a visitor. Why is he the only one bringing in any goddamn food? You all cook food. Next thing I know, man, they were bringing food out to goddamn. I think what they were going to do was eat my food, get me the fuck out of there, and then bring their food out and eat it. That's what they were going to do. Caesar took care of me there, too. I love Caesar, man. He's my buddy. So how is this the best Thanksgiving ever? I don't get Would it. Would you just shut up and let me talk? I thought it was over. No, it ain't over. So anyway, you know, we sitting there, you know, and Dunn got Is this where the motherfucker tried to stab another dude with a whip Yeah, bone? yeah. Oh, you got to tell this. The, the, when I put the turkey there. Now I had, I had the only turkey there. Man, they started fighting over the goddamn motherfucking turkey legs. Mind me them goddamn old, remember them old King Arthur days? Arr, and throw the bones at. They were doing that shit, man. I remember somebody breaking a pool stick. And threatening somebody with it? Yeah, I, I heard about that. How is this the best Thanksgiving ever? It sounds dangerous. Because it was fun, man. I was drunk. I was, they were making homemade Kahlua, and I was making a bunch of white Russians, you know? Yeah, you had a whole pitcher of white Russians. Yes, sir, boy. I got drunk on my motherfucking ass. After that, I don't remember a goddamn thing. I remember everybody fighting and screaming, and I remember the pool stick thing happening. I remember someone pulled out a gun. You remember a lot more than me, then. Well, I don't drink. So I'm I, drunk. I, I was I'm, sober for the whole thing. I'm so motherfucking drunk, man. I don't know. What the fuck is going on? You trying to burn my house down? Anyway. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. They're coming here. <laughs> they might see us recording and think something worked. But anyway, man. They stop, they ain't stopping, are they, boo? Yes. I didn't get hurt. Tell him to go the fuck on. What the fuck? <laughs> How you doing? Huh? Are they coming to us? Yeah, they saw us. I thought we were goddamn. That's a scary motherfucker. See, goddamn, they have a drive motherfucking yard. We didn't weed them motherfuckers down. Get the fuck out my yard. What was I at? I was talking about something. You, at this point, you don't remember anything else because you were freaking drinking white Russians by the pitcher. Drinking? I was drinking by the pitcher. I drunk. So, I know when I threw up. Our real Thanksgiving comes and Dad's ass didn't finish none of the food because he was pissed drunk and he went to sleep in his room. What's wrong with that? Well, Thanksgiving... Is that when I cut my fucking hand and got him? No, that was it? a couple years before. So, Grandpa gets annihilated passes out and we have a quiet little Thanksgiving. For one, it was actually a good Thanksgiving because we didn't have dad at people. Did I pick up that woman at the clubhouse? What? Did I pick up a woman at the clubhouse? No. That's a long haired guy. Wait. Oh God, I'm in trouble. I hear a bunch of big vehicles everywhere. I'm hot. I'm hot. Ambulance now? Fire truck. Goddamn fire truck. I don't know. So somebody's house must be burned down or somebody waiting on an ambulance. Beat the fuck out of me. The fuck? What's going on over there? What happened? Oh, no, that's where we're headed. Alright, let us know what happened. Uh, <laughs> that's where we're headed. They're going to your house, boy. You better run. Run, Forrest. Run. You know, now that we've heard what you think your favorite Thanksgiving is, which I can't see how, it was nothing but violence and... It was fun. ...and drunken, disorderly conduct. Now that we've heard your best Thanksgiving, what would you consider to be your worst Thanksgiving? Oh, that's without a doubt, man. We had, we were... In, in September, I I, sent out, I I wanted to work at Sally Chitlin's Strut. 
Oh, okay. I wanted to sell a bunch of stuff, you know? Bells and rebel stuff and flags and... It's amazing how such a good day could turn so horrible in an instant. I mean, we got we went out there the day before Thanksgiving and we set up the tents. We had everything all set up, you know it. So the next morning we can get our butts back up there and get ready to open, right? For all these people. The Sally Chitler store is like the biggest festival in South Carolina. Well, my mom was in the hospital because she had problems with her butt. And she was kind of delusional a little bit, you know, but I figured I'd go here. I didn't pay for this thing. It cost me over $200 to, to sign to sell there. So I had to do it. So that Thanksgiving morning, that's, we got up, took off the motherfucking Sally. Set up real good. You know, we were selling everything. And I mean, the best day we've ever had selling in our lives. I mean, I sold like 40 bells, uh, 50, 60 uh, flags. You right. had these like little weasel balls set up in a cage. Little weasel balls, yeah. You you, you put them out and had a little weasel tail and it took the ball. And you turn the ball on and the ball just go all over the place. Well, I put two of them and I put them in a cat cage. About like this with the with with wire. And I let them play. Man, then people going crazy over that motherfucking shit. I think I paid $2 a piece for them and I was selling them for 15 And uh, laser light. And laser, oh my God. Yeah, laser lights. Laser lights were bread and butter for a while. Ain't no shit, but that's before. Now you can't sell them because of the goddamn pilots and shit. See, now, see, this day, we made a couple thousand. We least, made a right? couple thousand dollars that day. I, rem I remember, I can usually judge how much we make at a festival by what you let me have. But let me finish the story. I was trying to say, I'm trying to express how good the day was. It doesn't matter. It ended bad. To where, that's what I'm saying. It was total polar opposites to how it began. Isn't that where I got you, the alligator tail to eat? Yes, you your did. First, oh. Your first taste of alligator and tail? And you tried to make me eat chitlin. Yeah, ch I love the chitlins. Oh, I, bleh. Anyway, we were working along, you know, along about 2.30 in the afternoon. I had an old track phone because you had to pay for the minutes, you know. Well, my phone rang, and we were busy, so I didn't answer it. About an hour later, the phone rang again, and it rang, and it rang, and it rang. So finally I asked, I said, hello. Got boys on the other side I said, uh, Mr. Green. I said, Yeah. This is Dr. Joyner from uh from uh Lexington County Hospital. I'm your mother's doctor. I said, Yeah, that dog, what's up? How's mama doing? He said, Well, Mr. Green, we need to talk. I said, What we need to talk about, Doc, what's going on with mama? He said, Your mama's got cancer of the rectum, and she's only got 30 days to live. I said, What? He said, Your your mama's got cancer and she don't have it 30 days. This is this Thanksgiving day. I said, Jesus fucking Christ. I said, Doc, I'll be there in two hours. Told Michael, pack up. But Dad, we're doing great. Son, pack up. Dad, we're doing so good. Look at all the money we're making. Pack up. So, broke down, the guy at the festival come up and said, where do you think you're going? The festival ain't over yet. I said, I just got a phone call from my daughter. My mama's only got 30 days to live. I need to get to the hospital. So, I went to the hospital, sat down with the doc, he explained to me what happened. I said, doc, you just checked her two months ago. Why didn't you find the cancer then? He said, it's, where, it's, a, it's a cancer that just shows up. And you're gone. And my sister was there. It was, I tell you, my mama was so delusional. There was a black lady across the hall. And my mom was out of her mind. And my mom telling me, that's the people from her bank. They didn't see if she's sick or not. They trying to steal her money. She said, go over and talk, go over there, go over there and tell them ends to her. And she was using the N word, right? I said, mama, don't be saying that around here, you know? <laughs> and I, 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 and she just wouldn't stop. So finally I, I went to the door and people, and I looked at the gentleman, he was standing at the door and he gave me kind of a dirty look. I said, look here, man, my mama's using the, the wrong word. I, I want to apologize. He said, mister, he said, I understand. He said, got one just like it right here. His grandfather was there. He was dying of cancer too, but not like cancer, but he was still dying of cancer too. He said, we understand. So they looked at me and they said, that th same Thanksgiving day, they said, well, now what do you want to do with your mama, Mr. Green? I said, what do you mean what I want to do with my mama? Well, we can put her in a nursing home and she can die there with hospice. Or we can leave her here. I said, no, my mama coming home. They said, no, Mr. Green, you're not taking your mama home. I said, my mama going home. My mama always said when she died, she wanted to die in her bed. I said, look here, 
I don't give a fuck what you do or say. I will pick my mother up out this bed and I will take her home. You're not going to stop me. My mother is going to die at home and die happy. Well, Mr. Green, we can get the police. Yeah, I said, you get any goddamn body you want, motherfucker. My mama going home. So we talked and they finally told me, they, they said, well, Mr. Green, I'll tell you what we'll do. They called in hospice. We had a long talk in hospice. And they told me that they could come to the house every day and, you know, give her medications and all that. So anyway, look at a long story short. My mama went home that night because I wouldn't let my mom stay there another minute. I took my mama home. I left my family and I moved in with my mama. The next day, I moved my family in with my mama. We had a house right down the street. But my mom was more important than that Thanksgiving. And I'll cover this more in December. But exactly 30 days from the time they told us she had cancer and that she was going to die, she passed away Christmas morning. She wanted to make it till Christmas, and she did. But I'm gonna, that's another story that I'm going to tell during this month. On the... On, on, how it was with mama during the 30 days. A lot of y'all will relate to it. If you don't relate to it, you'll know what to look for if it ever happens to you. So that was my worst Thanksgiving ever, Mike. Are you done now? You all know Derek. Derek owns Substation 2. But there's something you don't know about Derek. Derek has a heart. Derek has a heart that every Christmas morning, a child wakes up and has a toy in his hand to open. Derek has a heart knowing that, that these kids are going to bed that night knowing Santa Claus is coming. There's a lot of kids now whose parents are out of work, who can't afford to buy their kids what they need for Christmas or what they want. People like Derek and the, the Marine Corps Reserves, they're making sure these kids on Christmas morning have something to open to cuddle. A little girl and her doll, a little boy in his truck, come on. A little boy in his truck, his cars. Is that too much to ask? Now, I'm going to tell you something. Derek has a heart of gold. Yes, Derek even took care of me one year because I couldn't afford my grandkids. Derek came to me. Grandpa, I don't want your grandboys to go without Christmas. Touch me. If you have a heart, if you have a soul, if you have one ounce of love in your heart at all, pick up a toy. Drop it off in the Toys and Tots. The toys are going for a good purpose. They're not being given away or sent overseas. They're staying in this country. They're staying with kids right here. Derek, I want to thank you for Bob Bar. Oh, yeah. You're a good man. Oh, yeah. What the, what the Marine Corps Reserve is doing is fantastic. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, just if like, like Grandpa said, if you got the toys, drop them. Because there's a lot of kids out there who don't have Christmas. You know, they wake up every morning, you know, wake up in the morning, there's no Christmas. You know, we try to make this happen, and we're going to make it happen. Remember, youngins, be Santa Claus this year. I don't, it, it, you know, you, you go into the movie, take that money and buy a toy, throw it in the box. You be Santa Claus this year. You're going to feel good. You're going to say, oh, my God, here I am Christmas morning. I'm going to do my stuff, but I helped a child get a present for Christmas. Please help Derek out. Help the Marine Corps Reserves. Give a toy for tots. Derek, thank you so much. Yes, sir. It doesn't take much. You can just ship something off here to substation. No. Or you can go to your local Toys for Tots and just drop off a present because there are a lot of people who could use it. Uh, you know, we needed it at a time. You know, and he and Derek was there to provide it. And you know, this isn't like one of those things where you see people like, oh, does the toys really go to the kids? We know firsthand that it does. Uh, it can really go to good use. I've seen I've seen people going there. I've seen little kids wake up that they really didn't have anything, and they woke up. I, so I've seen some of the letters they've written to the, to the, to the Marine Corps. Thank you so much for what you've done. If it hadn't been for you, my kids wouldn't have had a Christmas. If you don't want to, if you don't want to take them in a box, and you you want to send them to Derek here at the, here at the substation, he'll make sure he's got two boxes. Show him the sign over here, Mike. He's even got a sign up. Go to the top. So. You For Grandpa, let's help some kids out this year. Don't send me nothing. Don't send me a thing, because I'm not getting it. I want it all. Send, get your toys. Drop off the toys and tots. The Marine Corps are doing a hell of a job. They do it every year. 
and the Semper Fi, they come through. That's all I gotta say, Mike. You know this flat tire? Remind me back many years ago. I was traveling down I-26 and had a blowout. I was like all over the road. Car flipped over two times. Had to come cut me out the car. This is a true story. Had to cut me out. Wait, the car. you you got a bad accident where your car flipped? Oh God, yeah. How I was old like were you? Eighteen, something like that. 17, 18. Now, Grandma had mentioned a wreck before, but she never told me about it. Yeah, and I was in the hospital for like three months. But that tire, that's why I'm so, that's why I'm scared of t flat tires now. I get a flat tire, I get off real quick. If I take a tire that's going down, <laughs> I'll pull over. Because I had one blow out on me and made me flip and time in the hospital. And What happened to you? Like, Well, I didn't die. Well, obviously. No, I mean, I, I, I broke both my arms, broke my leg. Jesus Christ. Had to have a... What kind of car was it? Huh? What kind of car was it? It was a 1960... No, no. 1958 Bel Air convertible. What? See, can you see the scar right there? It starts there and goes all the way up to here. See all the little chunks? I do see it. Yeah. Split my arm open. Well, that's crazy. I did not know that. Yeah. But I thought, you know, that's why, whenever you, that's why I tell everybody, if you got a tire... Don't be putting cheap tires on your tire, on your command, vehicle, whatever the fuck you're driving. Go ahead and buy it. If you buy a used tire, buy a good one. You don't want to end up on laying in a ditch somewhere dying because Joe Q Cat ran out in front of you and you had a flat tire. So, If you're wondering what we're telling the story and you had not seen the main video yet, Grandpa is stuck. We're waiting on Bridget to get back with the tire. Cut your hand open. Cut my hand open. You took a crap in the woods. Oh, I had to take a shit, man. God damn, it was bad. I'm glad this church was next to the woods. Now, did you really wipe your ass with them, like, banana leaves or whatever the fuck that was? Yeah, there was some kind of leaves. Hey! So, my hands. Oh, you got a little dirt on your hands. <laughs> what did you do? You pumped up a jack. So what? I did my job as a son. You let me crawl up all underneath that thing. It looked like you was hurting your back. It was hurt my back. Hurt my dick, too. On this pavement. Anyway. Are we done? Yeah. Okay. Like, We're I, done. End of this vlog. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I did not know I that. I said done. I didn't know the story about the car wreck. I said we're done. We're done. We're, we're finished. Are you going to entertain me anymore? We're, I, why don't you do a little, you mean do a little dance for you? Now you're done. I'll do a little dance. Good. Do, do the jig. I'll do the jig for you, man. Now, you happy? I, I entertain you. I come to the substation. So, I want to make a sandwich. Make your sandwich. Hell yeah, I'll make that too. Uh, no. I'd rather Derek make my sandwich. Why? I made sandwiches as good as him. I'm going to prove it. What do you say? You up for the challenge? Let's do the challenge. I'll make a better sandwich than you. Okay, let's do the challenge. And we'll let the fans decide. They can How are they going to decide? They can't taste it. They, they go by looks. His going to look much better than yours. Are you joking? You're the joke. So this is like a throwdown? A throwdown. This is an angry grandpa throwdown. Okay, let's do it. And we don't mean literally throw down. Don't throw the sandwich on the floor. Shut up. Hi, come here. Every time I've come with you, you never let me come out of account. Okay. First, let's do this. Yeah, what? Wash Let's them. Go wash them hands. You got to wash the hands. I did. I washed them before I got here. I wash them. He didn't even wash them before he got here. Yeah. I washed them before. I... We do it every time. Yeah, that's the law. I gotta, I gotta play doctor. Huh? We're at the soap. Yes, sir. Now, the bread. All right. Let's go dirty my hands. Nope. Alright, gotta bring it. Now bring it over here. Yep. Which knife? We're gonna uh, make it for who? Come on, come on, come on. You make it this one. I don't know, what am I making? For Michael? <laughs> this is yours. Right? Now nah, let's go let Matt make his own. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> this is yours. I don't want that. that. Knife. No. Come on, come on, come on. I, hey, I'm a gag now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.
<laughs> All the way down the middle. Go three up to Hell. Sam. You watching this? Yes, I'm watching. Dude, did I make notice this works out right? No, you cannot. Now what? Capricola. What the hell is Capricola? That ham right there. This? Yep. One. Two. Three. Yep. Bologna. Three. Bologna. Jesus Christ, man! They can be rude for nothing but me! Trying to get paid. Well, if we had a line, we'd be backed up. Yo, wait! Y'all just stay there in line! Yeah, I'll get yours on red! Is that right? Pepperoni. Oh, I got you, but that's what I'm like. Now what? Whatever you got taste for. You like hot beef? Oh, yeah, I have a hot I'll eat at doing it at the same time. Ah, I've been watching. Man, oh. it, you were taking a long time, Dad. You always have a oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Be careful, son. Yeah. Yeah. That it? That's it. That's pretty. That's real pretty. So I did a good job making my sandwich. But I'm gonna show you how to make a real sandwich. Man, you going too fast. Well, true. If there's a long line, then what? Take away. No. You got a half hour to go to lunch or whatever, you know? Do you care about your cup? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. You know yes. how many people? You go to other places, man, they don't care. We want the same way, right? Look at that, man. Come on, slow down, man. You make me look bad. Onions. You gotta have some. You gotta have some. You know? Thank you. Oh, that's Okay, Dad. He just slapped you in the face with that. Yeah, but hey, what? Alright, yes. Look at mine and look at his. You tell everybody I make the best sandwich. It's not even up for debate. It is, man. I make a pretty sandwich. But. Oh, you're making me a pretty little face on mine. I got you and you, Your sandwich is kind of like I've done mine. Oh, and he's gonna cut yours too. <laughs> oh, you gonna cut mine? You don't trust me with that, huh? Oh no, you might. You might. You believe this? He slapped you around. He owned me. Yeah, he did. You pwned me. Put that one here. Let's put the other one on the other. This here. Okay, here I am at Charlie Brown Seafood. Now I'm gonna go in and get me some catfish. And they better have some. That's all I got to say, cause AGP loves his catfish. Oh my God! Anyway, Charlie Brown seafood. Call in or take out. I didn't call in, but I'm gonna take out. <laughs> okay, here I am at the catfish. Good God! That's a Goliath catfish. Let's see what they got here. Ooh. It's all right, it's all right. Uh, I got Charlie Brown Yeah. 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 You got what? Mullet. I ain't need no goddamn mullet, man. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a bottom fish. I know what you're talking so about. So the catfish, though, ain't it? What, what about a Florida brown? That's what. I, you know, man. They, they used to call that a bitch fish. Hi. Right? Oh, going? Good. Good. You got any more small catfish back there? I don't think there's none in the cooler. Yep. No more in the cooler. Oh, you got the cooler right there. Anyway, these are the catfish. 
Whew. Good God Almighty. Whew. Tell you what, fish stink. I don't care what anybody says. I ain't gonna clean them. Yes, you are. Y'all, you, hey, you, you about to blind me to walk by the fish market? No. Nope. You walk by the fish market? <laughs> Hello, ladies. Why does the fish always smell like women? I have no clue. None Damn. at all. Damn. You just ain't got the right lady, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> How you want to clean today? I, I don't want no heads. I don't want no guts. Now, God, my hand smells like shit. <laughs> I want them clean. <laughs> okay, I got you. You want them butterfly open? <laughs> no, nah, not really. Okay. Catfish. I like catfish though. What the hell? All this water on the floor. <laughs> I know. Bring Jesus it. Christ. Yeah, Bring it down. <laughs> Wait, what you doing? I want to see. Got his ass open. Oh my God! That's not my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> you look like Pickle Boy! Man, look at that! Hey man, you need to get out of here for real. Why? You ain't supposed to de heck or get you. Woohoo! Kelly, Kelly Parker's gonna get you. You need to get out of here right now. I ain't getting de heck! Hey! Get him out of here! I ain't gotta go! Get this man out of this! No! I ain't gotta go! Hey, wait, wait! Alright, here I go. Here I go. What the hell's in here? What the hell's all this? Oh my god! down to get out of here. I ain't got. Told you. You're holding you all these crabs. Right now. All these crabs. Yeah, you need to get out. You're of holding here. them all, Kelly. Call, 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 Kelly. No, no, don't call oh, nobody. All right, all right. Get out of here. Hey, all right, get goddamn. Here. Told you one time. You, hey, I'm gonna lock you in here. Ha 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 they trying to run me out of here. You know them goddamn grabbing that cooler? I told you one time. Where you get it? Damn, they go crazy buying crab around here. Call this the crab house. Damn. That's how we. You must have forgot something. No, you're paid. You get the hell up out my store. I don't want to leave. Get the fuck out. I want. I want to go. What go. up? Go. Goodbye. You running me out of here, kid. Goodbye. You. Know, this is the second time you've run me out of the store. Get out. I'll be back next week. Because you better call the police. Hey, get the hell get out, out of here, store. sir. I ain't going. On the phone right now. I'll be back next week. I'm buying crap. I'm a customer, and I'll do what I want to. Bye. Look at that, man. Holy that, that's shit. That's that picture of Amy. 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 You telling me about this? Buddy. Isn't that nice? Let's get you to make that face. I got it. Not even the same face. Do more like a pursed lips, like you're about to, like you see a tasty cock. Okay. <laughs> Man, this is crazy. Hey, back on me. Isn't that awesome? It is. Look at she sent me her number. Let's call her. Where is it in your Facebook? Yeah. Even got, even got my glasses looking worn out. Hello? Yeah, may I speak to Amy? May I speak to Amy? Is Amy home? Hello? Amy! Yeah? This is Grandpa! Hey man, I, I'm 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 doing fantastic sitting there looking at your picture. Oh. You are. You let me tell you something, girl. Yeah. You are an artist. I've had a lot of people draw me, but you got me. Yeah. You got I me down pat. Oh my God, Michael, you got teeth in my mouth. Look. It's amazing. It's amazing, man. It's, you put teeth in my mouth. The, the whole thing is just really good. It is awesome, Amy. <laughs> how long did this take you? Yeah, how long did it take you to do this? Off and on for about two days. What? What? Two days? Yeah, well, off and on. I didn't do it all day. <laughs> no, that's crazy. That is crazy, girl. I swear it is. That would have taken me three months. You would have been taking you a lifetime because you can't draw. I used to be able to draw. You draw stick figures, okay? No, I used to be able to draw really you well. You can't draw jack shit. I used to be able to draw really well. You need to shut up. I'm talking to Amy. She's an artist. You're not. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't you holding it like this. I'll hold it. You are, you are, but you are really a talented artist. That's what I want to tell you, Amy. Well, thanks so much. Somebody thinks so. <laughs> darling, you need to be, you, you ought to be making a lot of money. All right, thank you, darling. Bye. Bye. <laughs> awesome. This is a fantastic drawing. I'm serious, Juggins. If y'all want a portrait draw, draw of your children or something, get in touch with Amy. I guarantee you she'll price you right. So, enjoy my picture, Juggins. Or if you just want her to draw you this. Yeah, or, you, or if you want a picture of me. Whatever. So, bye, Juggins. Y'all take care. Turn the goddamn video off now. I said turn it off. Grandpa here, and boy, sometimes I like to just... Get my butt Wait. sucked out with a butterfinger. Oh, you shut your mouth. Wait, I'm gonna yeah, hold on, say something, Dad. Pickle boy here. Hey, you're supposed to be you. Oh, Michael, you need to shut the fuck up, boy. I'm gonna beat your ass. I'm gonna knock the shit out your mouth. You understand me? I'm get that to you. camera out of my goddamn face. Get out of my goddamn get out of my face. Get out of my face. I like it. I'm in love with it. Get my picture. AGP here. AGP in the house. <laughs> Boy, I, you know, everybody asks me, Grandpa, where you get your cigarettes? You know, what kind of cigarettes you smoke? Well, I'm going to show you now because I'm on my way to get my fix. I'm addicted to cigarettes. I'm addicted to, to I'm going to go buzz for cigarettes. <laughs> I can't afford to buy them ready-mates, you know. Them goddamn things, boy, they got them such pride now. And cigarettes at $4 a pack. And I smoke three. I lie. Cigarette packs a day. That's what? $12 a day. Lie. I smoke more than that. But we ain't gonna talk about that. But we gonna talk about where I get my cigarettes. Are they even? Yeah, they open. Ah! Sometimes they not open, you know. But I, I, I'm gonna check it anyway. Let's just see what we got here. Price tobacco. This is where I buy my cigarettes. That's where I go. I, I, anyway, this is where I, man, goddamn guy. Get out of, I hate you know I hate having to wear seatbelts. They fucking suck. Anyway, this is where I, this is where I buy my cigarettes. I gotta be sure I got my card with me. Ah, I got it in my pocket. Got to pay for it somewhere. Anyway. This is where I buy my cigarettes. Half price tobacco. E cig kit. What the hell? What is an e cig? I don't know. We'll find out. What the hell is an e cig? An uh, e cig is an e cig electronic cigarette. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, Angry Grandpa. How you doing? You, 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 you gonna be on my, my one of my vlogs now? Oh my goodness. Why are you so angry? <laughs> Cause I spent too goddamn much money on cigarettes. Look at you, youngins. I wanna show y'all something. This is where Grandpa comes to buy all his cigarette stuff. His paraphernalia. <laughs> Look at all them different things, man. Them things there, they don't taste like menthol. They sell them just to make money. Let me see. This is something new. Called Beretta. What the hell is this? I got something to do with cigars. Let me see here. As you see, this is where I buy all my cigarette stuff. I'm taking them now. When I go places, I'm going to start doing videos about where I get my stuff from. So everybody can come and get them? Hell yeah. Y'all got the best price in there. All right. Anybody wants to buy me some tobacco? That's menthol. Can't handle that shit. Right there. Kentucky Select Pipe Tobacco. Jesus Christ, look at all them filters. All them, all them tubes. Man, goddamn, a lot of people buy cigarettes. A lot of people ain't in Grandpa. Is that what they call a hookah? A hookah hookah. I call it a hookah. Like a bunch of dicks hanging out of it. <laughs> Let me see, what else I got? All right, we got there. Now we gotta buy some, couple of. Them hot tubes suck. The hot rod? The hot, well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm a smoking fast person. Any words of wisdom? No words of wisdom. It's Friday and that's the weekend. 
That's what we always say. Ain't it right, Angry Grandpa? That's right. It's the weekend, and here at my cigarette, what's the name of the Half Price Tobacco, right? Half Price Tobacco. If you live in my area, in Somerville, if you live in the Somerville area, or Surratt, y'all come here, because they got that. Hey, how much, how much tobacco? $14.99. See, $14.99 for all that tobacco. And tubes? And the tubes is $4.49. For, God damn, they went up! They went up on you today. Good God. <laughs> that sucks. Always goes up on me. Just you. Because we love you so much. See, now I got, I got to put this down and I got to sign this paper. All right, youngins. Trying to see anything new I can show these people. Yeah, I like the one. Oh, good. You can go ahead, Josh. Oh, I like the one on the, bir uh, the birthday when I seen that one the other day. <laughs> <laughs> that was real good. Man, you got a name. You can sit and watch TV. You got a couch to lay down. Drink drinks. You can lay your ass on a couch. And eat snacks. And eat. Jesus Christ. You know, I love my time. How much do these things sell for now? $48.95. And after taxes, like $52. I'm telling you, youngins, quit buying the ready rolls. Ready rolls, ready maids, whatever the hell you want to call them. You need to start rolling your own cigarettes. They're cheaper. I saved right at $300 a month by rolling my own cigarettes. All right, youngers, I'm going to let y'all go, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Until you want to tell them bye. Go bye, ahead. Bye. You need to tell them your name. My name is Buddy. Buddy you you got a Facebook? Bye. Buddy Huff. Buddy Huff. <laughs> oh, that's a good name, Huff. You know, when I was a kid, I used to buy this shit called Go Transmission Fluid. <laughs> I was always huffing, or I'd get glue. You got a good name, Huff. I was a huffer. Anyway, bye, youngers. I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye. Hey, youngins, AGP, you know me. You eat chicken in my house one time. Yeah, I give you a damn old chicken leg and you eat the bone all something matter out the bone. <laughs> Listen, everyone knows I don't like Obama. Everyone knows that, that, that Jimmy Carter was the worst president we ever had until the day they elected Barack Obama. My problem. Everybody's giving Obamacare hell. I don't like it. It's going to hurt everybody. But that's my opinion. All these people crying, Obama this and Obama that and Obamacare this and Obamacare that and, 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 and we ain't never going to have nothing, do nothing, be nothing, whatever, nothing, who to give a fuck. But there's a problem. He was elected. Like it or not, he got Obamacare passed. It passed through both House and Senate and every goddamn thing else. And everybody's hollering, we need to ban Obama. It's a law. You all know that I believe in the Constitution. You all know that I believe if there's a law in the books, the law has to be obeyed and go through. Let this go through. Once this Obamacare fails and falls flat on its ass, go to the Democrats. It's gonna, it's, it's already ruined the legacy of Barack Obama. I mean, he's gonna go down as the worst president in history. Go figure. But you know, people get on Fox News. You know, I used to like, I used to watch Fox News all the time. I loved Fox News. Thought Megyn Kelly was hot as hell. Come on now, you gotta agree. You know, I think Fox News, I think they go out and they hire models and shit to be on there because they're the hottest women in town. MSNBC, they go get the more ugly bitches, you know, that all they want to do is bitch and that's because they can't get no goddamn man. They gonna sit around and make everybody else look bad on everything else. But that, that's my opinion, you know. Opinions like assholes. Everybody got an opinion. But I'm getting a little tired of Fox News. Some of the stuff they're trying to throw out about what Obamacare is going to do, what Obama's doing, and stuff like yeah, bullshit. Death panels and 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 and, and, and only certain people. You know, I hear it too on WTMA. They got this bitch. Her name is fucking Tara. 
Kara and the Mortis. Coco for Coco Puffs. Coco for Coco Puffs. Right, you know, that kind of a person. You know, you, your opinion don't matter. She don't like what you say. She just cuts you off, you know. Everybody has an opinion. And it, that's what I thought these talk shows were about, you know. I thought these talk shows were, you know, you could express yourself without whoever jumping your ass and giving you hell about it. But anyway, give Obamacare a chance. Let it fall on his ass. And we'll go from there. Then maybe we'll get together and actually get a good health care. Because this country needs a good health care program for all the people. Not just some of the people. Not the poor people. Not taking from the rich. But there's a middle line somewhere. That's the line we'll find. I'll see you young as old next next. Vlog in with AGP. Bye. This reminds me of Thanksgiving. My daddy done been hurt. And here we were, man. No money. All my all my friends in school talk about the Thanksgiving dinners with their family and how they were all gonna sit around the table, you know, at school. Well, what are you gonna do, Julie, for Thanksgiving? We're gonna sit around, we're gonna eat turkey and dressing and campaign dogs. And we're gonna all go around the table and see how thankful we are. That's what we gonna do, teacher. Billy, what you gonna do for Thanksgiving? Hey, teacher, we're gonna, we gonna cook a Thanksgiving turkey and dressing and my grandma from, my grandma from Connecticut coming and she, we all gonna sit around the table and say how thankful we are for something. That's what we gonna do, teacher. Little Charlie Green, what you gonna do for Thanksgiving? Nothing. We ain't got no money. Can't afford no turkey. Can't afford no dressing. Can't get no cranberry sauce. But mama go, mama gonna cook a spam. I remember my mama cooked that spam. And she'd make a spam. And and, and, and eggs and pancake. That was our that was our Thanksgiving dinner that year. We all sit around the table and Mama said, what you thankful for, son? I said, nothing. I ain't got no turkey. I ain't got no bird. We ain't got no dressing. We ain't got no cranberry sauce. What I got to be thankful for? Well, you're alive, you little cocksucker. Be thankful for that. Be thankful you got a roof over your head. Be thankful you you able to get up in the morning and take a bath and be warm. Be thankful for that, son. Be thankful. You ain't a goddamn. I'm telling my story. Be thankful for that, son. Go oh, damn, mama. Slow down. <laughs> Thank you for the spam, mama. Show my face. What do you want to show your face for? Because I want you to see how disappointed I am that you let your turkey burn. You know what? Fuck that turkey. I don't care. Okay, that's all that matters. Yeah, burn, burn, baby, burn. That was a phrase you heard back in the 60s. Anyway, I'm fucking tired of you, fat boy. I just decided to throw a chair. Can okay, I finish my blog and then I'll go check the turn? It's, it's probably like on fire by now. Well, why do you turn it off? Because I want you to turn it off. Go turn it off! That's a good point, but I gotta film you doing it for the video. It's cooking. <laughs> anyway, that was the year that I was thankful for the Thanksgiving spam that my mama went to a Piggly Wiggly and bought for us for Thanksgiving dinner and fuck you little Billy and fuck you little Susan. I'm glad y'all had your goddamn little Thanksgivings. I'm a happy fat motherfucker now. Guess what? I ain't having no bird this year either. I'm gonna have spam. Um, Bye. To my Thanksgiving I ain't coming to your spam. goddamn house nowhere. I'm not serving spam. I'm not coming to your house. You are coming. You are. You've been talking about it for weeks now. I am not. Dad's coming to my house for Thanksgiving. Lie, lie, lie. Might be a little late. I go check my turkey. I ain't got no key. We're both locked out. Way to go, fat boy. You know, a lot of time, man, the goddamn turkey's cooking. Oh, shit. And there ain't nobody here. No, no. Where in my house, Dad, you fat fuck? Oh, well. Kick the door in. No, I'm not. Let it burn down. Get away, it'll burn out.
Oh, that's it. Well, so that's it. My Perfect. phone is in the house. I can't call the fire department. Mine too. Hey, Mike. Mike. Hold on. What? What? Keys. You locked the door, but I had the keys. Jesus, man. You have a nice night. Oh, shut up. Have a nice night, fat boy. Hey. What? I'm coming in. Hey. What are you doing? Eating goddamn pork skin. So, so you, are you going to eat that pork skin? Because it's sitting right beside a big pile of tobacco. So what? I might as well eat the bad guy. I'm smoking that. Okay, so, so well, how old were you when you first smoked? What? How old were you when you first took a drag of a cigarette? 10, 11, something like that. Seriously? Yeah. You never stopped? No. Got caught one time. Me and Russell Baker. We lived in Snatches Hole. And Mama come home from work. Well, we dug a hole into the house, right? About that deep. About like that, so he and I can get into it. And we steal cigarettes from my daddy. And we go into the house and smoke. And mama come home one day and all of a sudden I see the goddamn looking at the bottom of the house and there's a pair of legs right there. And I go, be quiet, Russell. She said, uh huh. Y'all come out of that house. Said, We're not here. Get out. Yes, ma'am. Well, they're punishment to me. They went and bought a whole goddamn cart of cigarettes. And they made me sit at the table and smoke that whole fucking cart one after the other. I was a green man puking, all this shit, you know, but I wasn't like him. How, how long for you smoked again after that? Next day, shit. <laughs> I wanted them more then. <laughs> so they turned you into the addict you are. So, so Russell's dad came home and mama went and told Mr. Baker that Russell, she caught me and Russell in the house. That man took a goddamn piece of a water hose about that long. And he beat that poor boy. Oh, God. Thank God my mom and daddy. What the fuck is that? It's your text message sound. Oh, well, yeah. But anyway, we, uh, he beat him with that hose, man. I thought poor boy, he bleeding. He beat him so bad. But that Russell, he, he, Russell ended up going to, he, he ended up going to a school, breaking into the school, stealing a school bus, taking the school bus for a joy ride, and did two years in fucking uh, reformatory. Jesus. Uh, damn. Hey, you're making me forget what I'm doing. How long before you became like an addict? Oh, God damn. I don't know, Michael. What, a couple years later? I don't God, know. Are you serious? How many packs were you smoking then? I, was, I think I was, what, 14 years old, smoking three packs a day. No way! Well, God damn, cigarettes were but 26 cents a pack. And how old were you when you were smoking like 20 packs a day? I never smoked 20 packs a day. Oh, pack. you liar. Yeah, you full of shit. Michael, God damn, if I smoked, I would, if I, if I smoked 20 packs a day, I would have time to do nothing else. I remember specifically you sending mom to the store. <coughs> Shut up. Give me 20 packs. I did not. And that was 20. every day. Four packs. Yeah, no, God, come on. Don't you dare lie. I was smoking four goddamn packs a fucking day. You don't tell me how many I was smoking. It was basics. I remember you were smoking. Tina go to still give me 20 packs of basic ultra light. I did not. And then it was Doral. You a goddamn liar. Then it was like 15 packs of Doral ultra lights a day. At least now you're rolling your own. Yeah, I like rolling them on the cheaper. I save like $300 a month. Yeah, you were spending like eight. I know. You, you making you buy them for me. You didn't know it. I'm pretty sure I did know and I just didn't want to say nothing. <laughs> Who the fuck? Who that bothering me? Hey, anybody bother me? Just tell me my goddamn pictures failed to send. Mother. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't funny. <laughs> Why you always gotta make fun of me and laugh? <clears throat> so where'd you get that Popeye shirt? A fan. Mailed it to me for my birthday. What fan? I'm not gonna give her a name. Is that because of me? Huh? Is that because I'm talking? Yes, God damn it! I, you need to leave me alone. Her name was Rebecca. Rebecca Black? No, Rebecca. That's already rolled. No, God damn what, no! What the hell? I'm not making it off him. God damn! Freak I'm trying to hell. Freakazoid, motherfucker! 
you're getting in my goddamn head when you start to piss me to fuck off. You know something? Why did I let you shoot up my dick? You want me to hand them to you? No! Don't you leave them. I don't know why I let you shoot up my dick. I don't know. I should have shot your mama the day you were born. You ain't got no teeth to eat those with. I suck on them. Ew! Oh my god! You suck on the pork rinds so they get soft and wet again? Would you please... Ew. Stop. When did you meet mom? Shut up! Then you got in this. Here, I'll do this one. I got it! What happened? Oh my god, are you serious? Are you okay? <laughs> you really need to do it, Mike. What happened? It closed on your finger. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your finger. <laughs> it looks fine. So when did you meet mom? God damn! What? Okay, I'll do this one. Get away! What? Man, you make a mess here now. Stop it! What's wrong with you? God, man, god damn you! <laughs> here, I'll push it to you. <laughs> Quit! God damn it! <laughs> I'm just giving you your tobacco. That was a couple of seconds of silence to for whom I believe the greatest president who ever lived, John F. Kennedy. It was 50 years ago today. The weather was pretty much as a little chilly, a little overcast, and I was in the fifth grade. I should, probably should have been in the seventh, but I failed. But I was in the fifth grade, I was at Stone Oak Park Elementary School. And I remember the, the principal came and coming over the loudspeaker. Attention, attention. I have an announcement. And it's like one o'clock in the afternoon. And I remember, shit, no math test. President John F. Kennedy was assassinated today. He was shot and killed in Texas. Being young, you know, I really didn't know too much. So I was like the other kids in the class, yay, no school, you know. I remember getting on the bus and I remember the bus driver crying. I remember the bus driver saying, but please young, show respect. A great man died today. I remember the bus ride was silent. Nobody said a word, everybody was quiet. I remember going, getting off at the bus stop. I remember walking up to a house. We lived in a house, but we had a porch. I remember walking up to the porch. My mama, my mother was sitting on the porch. My mother was crying. Mom, mom, what's wrong? Mama, please quit crying, what's wrong? I can see my mama now, sitting on that porch. Son, we lost a great man today. We lost the greatest president this country's ever had. We lost a man who cared for everybody. We lost a man who wanted everybody to, be, to have equal rights. My mother sobbed. She, she grabbed me, she held me, she said, son, I don't want you to grow up in a world where people kill people just because they're, they're different, they think different. My mom held me, she's close. I can still feel my mother holding me. I, I hear my mother talking about, about President Kennedy and, and what he meant to the country, what he meant to the individual, what he meant to people. I remember the TV, we didn't have 24 hour stations, but for those three days, that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, there was 24 hours, nothing but John Kennedy. I remember the Lee Harvey Oswald when they, when they found him. 
I remember when they arrested him and they put him in. It was like the, the, the man who shot the president of the United States has been captured. I remember thinking to myself, that he needs to die. I remember that Sunday when Jack Ruby, he was, they even showed him talking to some of the reporters. And, and, and when Jack Ruby took his gun, when they brought Levy Harvey Oswald out to transfer him, I remember seeing, I remember seeing Jack Ruby shooting Lee Harvey Oswald. And I remember, good, die! My mother, my father, crying because it ended a, a part of me. It ended a part of them. It ended a part of you. If, if, if it, 50 years ago, November the 22nd, 1963, is a day we'll never forget. I remember, I remember seeing the funeral, of the procession. I remember them going to the, to the cemetery. I remember them lighting the eternal flame, and that flame is never out. I swear to God, that was the greatest man that ever lived. You people get the way y'all do, y'all don't think, you young ones, you need to go look at your history books and read about Jack Kennedy, because he was the greatest president that ever lived. He was a family man. True, he had a problem with women. But name me one man that doesn't have a problem of some kind. I still see my mother on the porch. I still see her crying. I see her holding me. I see the Kennedys consoling Jacqueline. Mr. President, 50 years later, I still know where I was, what I was doing, and I remember what happened. God bless you, Mr. President. I know you're looking down on this country now smiling. Goodbye, Mr. President. That's, that's all I got. I Turn it off, please. Grandpa here. You know when I did that vlog about Kennedy? It brought back a lot of memories for me. 54 years to ago today, my dad got into a car wreck. 54 years ago today, My life changed forever. Before then, I was a playful little boy. Had a little had a daddy who would go out with me and play football, do things, take me to places, you know. And but on that particular morning, the 23rd, my daddy was out that night. He'd been drinking. He tried to take me with him. Mama told him no, I had to stay home. He decided he was gonna go visit his mama in North Carolina. On the way there, he wrecked his car. Mama was mad because he left and went like that. She, she packed us up. We went to my grandmother's in older South Carolina. And mom was talking about leaving dad. That Saturday, mama knew something was wrong. She didn't know what. She, the phone call came to my grandma's house. It was the South Carolina Highway Patrol. Mrs. Green, you need to get back to Charleston. Your husband has been in an accident and he's in the medical university. Mama packed us up. My grandma says, you're not going by yourself, honey. I'm going too. 
So we all got in the car and Mama took off to Charleston. Mama was flying. We got to Charleston and got home. There were neighbors came over, you know, and what's going on? We saw that we saw the we saw the state troopers here at the house. We you know we didn't know what was going on. Mama didn't say a word. She put us in the house. Grandma came with was with, with us. Mama took off down at Med U. Never didn't see Mama for two weeks, but Mama would call. Said, get in touch with your grandmama. Told my mama, my grandmama, to get in touch with the other grandmama and them and tell them that daddy had been in the wreck and he was he was paralyzed from the neck down. I didn't see my dad for eight, nine weeks. I was a little fella, you know, what, eight, nine years old. So we got a chance. You can bring him up because we don't know how much longer he's got because they didn't expect dad to live. So we, we went to the hospital. I was too young, but they were going to sneak me up the back steps. Daddy was on like about the, the ninth or tenth floor. They were going to sneak me up the steps so that I could see him. And one of the nursing aides there that got to know my mama, them real good, was going to sneak me into the room to see my dad. But on the way there, I, I got sick and came down with diarrhea and throw it up. And I had to sit in the car because mama had to go. It was bad. I mean, there was my dad and mama. Back to mama. Mama, mama would go to the hospital and stay all night long. And then during the day she would go to work. Well, this went on for months and months and months. And they had daddy on a striker frame. And finally, they would just let me go up, you know, because daddy had been there for so long. He was on a striker frame. And there he was in a striker frame. <clears throat> had some tongs in his head but in a, tied to a rope and a bunch of waist down. And he was in the striker frame where they had to turn him every so often. And, and they, when, when I usually go up there, he'd be facing down, and I'd, I'd get on the floor. I'd crawl under the striker frame and talk to my dad. He didn't hear me. He didn't know I was in the world right then. But I knew he heard me. <laughs> my dad was paralyzed from neck down. He, he couldn't move his arms. He could swing his arms, but he couldn't move his hands. He couldn't move his legs. Finally, one day at the hospital, got in touch with my mom. They said, Ms. Green, we have to do something here. The insurance is cut off. There's nobody paying this bill now. Either you make arrangements to pay the bill, or, or, or we got to put him out. My mother went to a center that we had called Center to Fritz Hollings. I was a little boy. She carried me with her. And he looked at her and he said, Miss Green, you're a young woman. Start over. Forget about him. Go on about your life and give that boy a good daddy that'll take care of you. My mama eat his ass out. She said, you sorry son of a bitch. You garbage. That's my husband. We got married for good and worse. For everything. Not until you get into a wreck and you're paralyzed. So mama left. Somebody got her in touch with Mendel Rivers. He was our congressman. Mama. Mama went to see Mendel Rivers. Mendel Rivers got all the information he had to have. He told, he told us, he, he said, get this man in a VA hospital. Get him there today. They said, well, this protocol, Mr. Congressman Rivers. Congressman Rivers said, screw Screw the protocol. I want this man in a VA hospital and I want him there by six o'clock tonight. That night, daddy was in the VA hospital. And, you know, I know I'm jumping guns. I'm going from here pillar to post, but these are all these memories that are rushing through my head, you know. You, you don't think about chronological order at times like this.
My dad loved me. I love my dad. But you ask why I don't like Thanksgiving? This is why. My dad got hurt just before Thanksgiving. My dad was a good man. My mother was a great mother. She raised two kids when everybody else was saying, Dorothy, you can't do it. Uh, let your brother uh, raise this one. Let your, let this brother raise that one. Well, let me tell you something. My mom would say, screw you, they're my kids. They're not going nowhere. They're mine. They're not leaving Charles and I. Christmas, my mama was, that first Christmas, we had nothing, we had no tree, no nothing. Mama was working for GEX, which is a government exchange a store. And they came over and they brought us a tree and groceries. And I think that's why, you know, I, I like helping people because I was, we were helped when I was a kid. It's just, it's impossible to say everything that I want to say. You never know what's going to happen to you in life. You never know. <laughs> my daddy loved me. <laughs> my daddy got drunk, true. My daddy got a car wreck because of his, his own choice. That's true. <laughs> but my daddy, my daddy spent almost 40 years looking up, asking for forgiveness. If that man wasn't forgiven, then I don't know who could be. <laughs> it's funny how one thing can trigger memories of something else. I love my dad. I love my mother. My dad paid for everything he ever did. For 30 some years, he paid and he paid and he paid and he paid. I'm telling you youngins, if you, if y'all drink, if you do, don't get behind a wheel. My life was changed forever. I don't want your life changed forever. I really don't know what else I can say. <laughs> Over 50 years ago today, Charles Green had a wreck. I love you, Daddy. <laughs> I miss you so much. <laughs> now you're gone. Mama's gone. Charlene's gone. I got nobody now. Everybody knows. I think that's why I... I <laughs> Oh my god. I'm sorry. I don't mean to cry like this. Just this hit me hard now. You know, my sister passed away this year. My niece passed away this year. I guess I'm feeling all alone in the world now. <coughs> Fifty-four years ago today. My life was changed forever. And I remember today. <laughs> like it was yesterday. <laughs> a strong woman raising two kids, taking care of an invalid husband. <laughs> and now it's, it was the four of us. Now it's just the one. I don't know if Michael's going to put this up or not. 
but I hope it helps somebody because if you're out there and, and the, you're hurting over family tragedies like this, you're not alone. You're not alone. We're, you know, there's a lot of us in the same boat and we all got a paddle. <laughs> At least daddy's in a pretty place. Let me let's scan this place. It's a beautiful place. I want to tell you about a Thanksgiving about Michael. I'm telling, I'm telling on you again. I don't recall any horrible Thanksgivings with me. So. I do, because you were five years old. Okay. And we had the whole family around the table. Must have been 12 of us. You know, I don't cook three turkeys. Did we and, live in Goose Creek? Yep. <laughs> anyway, had everybody sitting around, and my mama was sitting next to, sitting next to Michael. All of a sudden, Michael shit his pants. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Michael shit his pants, and my mom was going, she's smelling the turkey. She's smelling the dressing. She said, Charlie, something sour. I said, what do you mean, Mom? Says, I'm telling you, something sour. And Michael, Michael, he's, Michael like he always did. So I'm shoveling it in, and it's coming out the back. You were shoveling it. It was coming out the back, man. All of a sudden, man, who was it? Oh, your Uncle Gordon. Your Uncle Gordon, he was sitting on the other side of you. He said, I smell it too, Grandma. Good God, Charlie, what'd you put in this turkey? <laughs> so we all looking, man, I swear to God, man, went and looked in the oven everywhere. It smelled bad, but couldn't find it. I just walked past Michael. Jesus fucking Christ. I picked Michael, I picked you up, I dropped your pants. The goddamn shit was running down your leg. No, it wasn't. I swear to God, it was running out down your leg. It was it was all in your goddamn britches. And I said, Michael, we gotta give you a bath. You know what you said? I gotta eat. Hey, <laughs> you no. ain't kidding you shit. You had to eat. No, you're making this up. I swear to God, you you grabbed her that goddamn turkey leg. <laughs> So I'm sitting there gobbling on turkey shit in my You pants. were gobbling in just a shit in your... You reminded me of a turkey. You know, turkey eating shit. You were eating shit at the same time. You didn't give a damn. What happened to you picked up a virus? Did I give it to anybody else? H hell yeah, everybody around the table. <laughs> Within three days, everybody was still oh, home shit. They started, they tried to blame the food, saying I, po <laughs> saying I poisoned their asses and shit. Oh, shit. I ain't poisoned nobody. Michael gave everybody the shits. So... I, had, I got sick at Thanksgiving. I shit my pants. Everyone got sick, and I got the blame. Well, what a what a lovely. That was a great Thanksgiving. We can call this a shitty Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a shitty Thanksgiving, man. Cause, oh man, that Saturday afternoon. Oh my God, the whole house smelled like a fucking turd bank. Okay, was it that bad? Seriously? Yeah, it was, man. It smelled like a turd bank in my house. Because you had your three brothers and your sister, sisters, three brothers, yeah. Everybody's shitting on hey, at one time. Th I don't have three brothers. Well, I have one brother and well, two sisters. They, well, they had to shit. I had this friend. His name was Steve Elderton. And he was like my buddy. Well, he stayed with us for a long time. If you're wondering, that was 8-Ball from the Viking video you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, his name was 8-Ball from the Viking video. Uh... Anyway, he had his little chihuahua. Oh. Little chihuahua's name was, he called it Pup Pup. And he'd always say, Shamir Pup Pup, Shamir Pup Pup. Well, anyway, old Pup Pup. Steve drank heavy. And Steve would take his, he would get drunk. He'd drink a case of beer a night. Probably more than that, wouldn't you say? Yeah, a case of beer, some hot damn. Yeah, some hot damn. And, and then he'd just top it off with a uh, Cyroquil. Well, one night, he was laying on the couch, sound asleep, and old Pup Pup was running all over the fucking floor, and we done had Thanksgiving dinner. And I mean, boy, we were all full, and Steve said, I'm gonna go to sleep. And it was snowing, too. It actually snowed in Columbia that night. Had ice everywhere, you know, and... Man, I, Michael comes to me, he's laughing. Daddy, Daddy, come look. So I said, what? He said, come look. Well, Steve, Took his teeth out of his mouth. Now, see, before you can say this, let me go ahead and say a part of the story. We're all just sitting there, and Steve's on the couch, passed out. He's... <laughs> yeah, that's true. And his teeth 
were ha almost hanging. He had false teeth, and his teeth were like hanging out of his mouth. And then finally, he and the teeth fall to the floor. <coughs> <coughs> Pup Puck had done picked up the teeth, had them in his mouth, smiling. The next morning, Steve got up and one of his friends come over drunk. And Steve was still drunk from the night before. Steve said, I'm going to drive her home. Oh, man. You were so furious. This was your van, wasn't it? You no, know, it yeah. It was you, my you van. Drove he your borrowed. Van. Pa, can I borrow your van? Yeah, it was a purple van, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So I let him drive it. So he gets that old girl and he drives her home and he gets pulled over and goes to jail. My van was impounded. He was in jail and, and somebody had borrowed his truck and was in Augusta. Had no transportation, couldn't go get him out of jail. Cost me almost 200 bucks to get my van out, which I made him pay. And that was a Thanksgiving to remember, but but I got to thinking about old pup pup and that smile. That was. So and just to throw another quick story about his teeth in there, just because it's funny to talk about. One time, dad was dad was doing a thing. Oh, I'm gonna make candy apples. We're, oh my God, I remember that now. Yeah. We are going. Dad was gonna be in the carnival business. Remember and, that? Yeah. And so me and dad were we were all trying out the candy Did apple I tell recipe. The story? We went and bought. We got in with UPS. They were having a put a pull the a pull the plane. You know. And it was on a Saturday, and I went out and bought like five bushels of apples and all this stuff to make. Well, anyway, we did this thing where he's giving me a ticket, but then all of a sudden UPS canceled it for that day. And there I was with five goddamn bushels of apples. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You remember all them candy apples made, and I was like. So. We were trying out the candy apple recipe. You know, Dad's got this bubbling cauldron of red, like, fucking <laughs> liquid. It look like lava. And so my brother Charles decides, I'm going to stick my finger in that motherfucker. And so he does it. He, <laughs> he puts it in his mouth. <laughs> and so Steve decides, I'm going to do it too. Steve dunks his finger in there, puts it in his mouth, Pulls his finger out of his mouth and his teeth are stuck to his finger. They burned. They melted. Melted his teeth. He finally got his finger loose and the teeth were burned and they were melted. That's how hot the candy apple shit was. With the goddamn candy apple stuff melted his teeth. Like, you have to have that candy apple mix <laughs> super hot. And, of course, afterwards, we spent all that money on candy apples and you got some for elephant ears. Yeah, I mean. You had a freezer full of dough. Remember that? Oh, my God. All them elephant ears. All them damn. Uh, we, were, we, we were making homemade elephant ears and pizzas with that dough yeah. for like four months. No lie. But anyway, I had to tell y'all that story about Steve and the, and the dog and the teeth. Bye, youngins. So I remember one year, it was a Thanksgiving. Oh, God. Dad told me for the first time he'd ever told me this, don't get no help from the school. Come on, man, hurry up. Dad tells me, don't get any help from the school it's cold, Michael. for Thanksgiving because he's tired of the, I'm tired of mother the thing we broke. Michael, the freeze has got to be 30 degrees out here. I'm trying to tell a story. Hurry up! Okay, so 30 degrees. I'm gonna get the real temperature here. Okay. Would you please goddamn hurry up? I'm getting the temperature to see. I'm freezing my nuts off! I think you're full of shit. Dumbass. What the fuck are you looking at? Okay, it's 46. Okay, it's, well, it's goddamn. Cold. I'm it's, not here. Goddamn it's shirt. Cold. It's cold. It's cold. You're right. So, for once, Dad had his, uh, his flea market business. Okay, here you go. I'm freezing my nuts off, man. Come on, hurry up. Dad had his flea market business, and we were finally making money. He was selling bells and swords and rebel flags. I got ice cream hanging off my nuts. Come on, it's not that cold. The fuck it ain't cold. Here. No, I ain't wearing your goddamn shirt. No, 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 no. You got that goddamn dog fur on that motherfucker. I ain't wearing it. Here you go. No! I'll put it in the goddamn yard. I'm trying to help you. What a goddamn dog here all over me. This is a funny story, and I want to tell it. Hurry up! I'm seriously hurry up. <laughs> so, so dad Good God. tells me, don't you get no help from the school this year. So I was in this I was in a program where I was gonna skip a grade. Hurry the fuck up! And the teacher comes up to me. Oh god damn that wind. Dad, please let me tell the story. My god, I'm going in. No, matter you. of fact. So the dad tells me, Don't you get any help from the school? 
So my teacher comes to me, Michael, does your family need any kind of Thanksgiving help? And naturally, me being a fat little fucker. Damn, it's cold. Let me just tell the story, Dad. Here, cuddle up to me. No! Grab a hole. I'm going in. So the teacher asked me if I need help, and I said, and I said, yes, please, we could use the Thanksgiving help. Stand down, goddamn pot in the wind. Okay. You call me fat? Yeah, you fat ass bitch. So dad tells me not to do it, and she offers us help. And they called dad to the school. And they called me to the office while dad was there so I could help him. Do you remember this? Hurry up! I can't tell the story and you act like this. I won't finish the story until you act right. Fuck you, man. I'm going in. No, no, just take your hands out of your pocket and look like you're warm. No, I'm not. Then I'm not going to finish the story. <laughs> just do it. Play along. My. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's just finish the story. So they call me to the office, and Dad thinks he's being called for some sort of academic thing. Oh, and Dad God, gets to the God. office. Dad, please let me tell the story. Oh, fuck. Just look, this is the end of the story. So Dad called, they call me to the office. I get there, and Dad goes, what am I here for? Next thing you know, they bring out this box with a turkey in it. Hurry up! And the stuff for dressing and mashed potatoes and all this shit. And Dad goes, who's that for? Not going to go in now? Who's, uh, no, no, you didn't do the thing yet. Dad goes, who's that for? Uh, this is for you, Mr. Green. Dad takes the box and dumps it on the floor. I said, I ain't no help! Leaves the office, and me, my teacher, and the principal oh, are just God. standing there. Are you this cold? I'm cold, cold, cold. I really am cold. I gotta go in. Dad dumps all the food on the floor, gets in his van, <laughs> and leaves. And the God teacher... Give me up! Okay, that's the end of the story. You dumped all the food out, you didn't accept help. Jesus Christ. Dad dumps all the food on the floor. He, I think he tried to try to stomp on the turkey. Gets in his, gets in, he didn't have a van, he had a car at the time. Gets in his car, hauls ass. That's it. Left, he's talking about being cold, I hear him in there. Cold, cold, cold. So anyway, Dad told me not to ask for help. I asked for help. He gets the help and he dumps the food on the floor because he says we didn't yeah, need yeah. it. I had to finish the story, you wouldn't let me finish it. Are you stupid? You know what the temperature is? It's cold out there! Fuck it. Hey! Sorry! No room in the inn! AGP here! Ha <laughs> ha! I hope your Thanksgiving sucked. Mine did. Went home wearing cornbread and shit, you know what I'm saying? But it, Thanksgiving's gone. Now we in the countdown to Christmas. I would say Xmas, but then some of you assholes say, It's Christmas! It's Christmas! Well, whatever. Who cares? Anyway, <clears throat> let's just start it off today. Let me see, what can I tell you about Christmas? I ever tell you all about the Christmas I got my brand new bicycle? Back when I was, back when I was up! Uh, Get, get some kind of loud. Back when I was, uh, how was I? Seven, eight year old. And, and, and I wanted a bicycle so bad. I said, Mama, Mama, I want a bicycle. I want a bicycle. Mama said, You can run over my car. I pout. You know, you know how little kids pout? That lip goes out. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, <coughs> so. My mama and daddy, they used to eat a lot of Krispy Kreme. And, and, and during the Christmas season that year, I, mama, mama, while she was a Krispy Kreme, she registered for a toy train they were giving away. A line, that's going to be worth some money today. So, I'm sitting there, you know, and, and, and here it comes getting close time for Christmas, you know, and I'm, I'm excited. We, we had trees, we had them little tiny little motherfucking trees, you know, that you put on a table, you know. My mom didn't, they didn't go out. You know, I remember on, on Christmas time, we'd all go to the drugstore on Sunday. And it usually rained. For some reason, it had to rain. If it didn't rain, we weren't going to no drugstore to get no tree. Had to be raining and thundering, you know, to get that tree. And Daddy'd always buy me and my sister some big old fat ass uh, candy canes, you know, peppermint sticks. Man. And, I, and, and teacher asked me, I want y'all to draw me a picture of what y'all want for Christmas. I drew a bicycle. To me, it looked like a bicycle anyway. So I drew that bicycle, and, I, and I, she wrote, it's a nice picture, Charlie. I took it home, I said, Mama, look! 
Here, look, I, I got a good mark. I got a good, good mark for this paper. Tell it me. Good work, Charlie. I drew a bicycle, Mama. Say, what do we want for Christmas? I want a bicycle. <laughs> Mama Day, you get run by a car. Damn it. Had to buy it again. I wanted a bicycle. And, and anyway, so about three days before Christmas, Mama got a phone call from Krispy Kreme. She done won that train. Oh man, I was excited. All right, I got a Christmas, I got a choo-choo train for Christmas. Yeah. I got a choo-choo train, I got a choo-choo train. <laughs> uh, Mama says, we're gonna give this to your cousin Davey. What? You're my mother, that's my choo-choo train, Mom says. It is, I want it, not you. Pad to pound. Anyway. We were going to my cousin's house for Christmas anyway, you know. I, I like going to my cousin because me and Davy, we'd always go in the woods and shoot squirrel, you know. <laughs> I had fun doing that shit. <clears throat> so, so we, we, Christmas morning come. And all of a sudden, man, I jumped from my bed, you know. I ran to the window to see what was the matter. Well, I forgot my point. Anyway, I went and I looked and, I, and guess what? I had a bicycle! Ah! It was a big red shiny bicycle. Had chrome fenders. Had had, had, had a fox tail hanging off the reflector light in the back. Had 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 a little basket in the front. Hey, I wasn't funny. I didn't want no basket. The basket had to go. You know what I'm saying? But it had a pretty had a pretty horn, man. Ring a ring a ring a ring a ring a ring a. I ain't get hit by no car. Can I ring a ring a ring a ring a? Yeah. <laughs> I had my bicycle. My daddy got out and he said, son, let's take your bicycle outside because I don't know if you can ride a bicycle. I can ride a bicycle, daddy. I rode Donald Pageants. He let me ride his bicycle once. So I rode my bicycle. I went down the street, come back. Almost got hit by a car. Car come around the corner. I didn't see it damn near broadside. Daddy said, I ain't going to tell you mama. I said, thank you, daddy. Well, my fat ass scissor came out. We're all fat ass. She said, I want to ride Charlie's bicycle. I said, no, it's my bicycle. Get your large fat ass away from my bicycle. Daddy said, she can ride the bicycle, Charlie. Had to pout. So, she gets on my bicycle and she riding down the road. She can't ride no goddamn bicycle. She fell off the motherfucker. She fell off, broke my motherfucking headlight. I cried, you bitch, you broke my headlight. You smashed my bicycle. You pig. Daddy cut my ass. You don't call your sister names. But daddy, she broke my bicycle. Dad says, well, I'll fix it the first week. Okay, Daddy. I love you, Daddy. Thank you for the magic! <laughs> so, yeah, we, we, went, we went to my cousin's house, you know. And <clears throat> Man, they got some fantastic looking flashlights. They were like mounted on the side, you know. They had red, and blue, and green. Different color lenses. I wanted one of them bad. I didn't get one of them either. So then Mama broke out and said, Oh, Davy, Santa Claus left you this at our house. And little Davy looked at the train he went, Oh my God, he was younger than me. Oh my God, a choo-choo train for me. And you know something? I felt kind of bad about the way I acted. I felt bad that I thought about me more than I did my own family. Watching my cousin with that choo-choo train, I think back now, I'll never forget little Davy on the floor putting that track together. Precious memories, precious memories. But I got my bicycle! <laughs> and it got fixed! And I rode it for 10 years because my mom and daddy were too cheap to buy me another one. <laughs> Bye, youngins! See y'all tomorrow! I do this for you youngins every year because y'all remind me. And I've already had like 50 fucking inboxes. Hey, Grandpa, night before Christmas! Night before Christmas! Well, I don't know if I can remember it. <clears throat> I did that, I wrote that a long, long time ago.
Let's, let's try it. Uh. It was the night before Christmas. And all through the house, the whole damn family was drunk as a louse. With mother in the whorehouse and pa in the jail, I had just settled down to a nice piece of tail. And up from the roof there rose such a clatter. I jumped off, oh, I jumped off my ex-sister-in-law to see what was the matter. I ran to the window. I threw back the sash to know where the gun is shit pot and busted my fat ass! And what did my wandering eyes did appear was a fat motherfucker and a stinking reindeer! He came down the chimney like a bat out of hell. I knew all at once the motherfucker fell! <laughs> He filled our stockings with presents and beer and a rubber dick for the family queer. And I heard him exclaim as he rode out of sight, Fuck you all! It's been a hell of a night! <laughs> I hope all my new young is like that. I'm gonna come up with a new one this year. Yeah, I am. But right now, live with this one. Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah and... Shalom or Shalom or whatever it is and and, and, and happy Earth Day and, and Merry Christmas! <laughs> you know, back when Michael was a little boy at Christmas time, him and his sister Kimberly you know, I, they would they would take my personal items they would take my, my shoes my hammer uh, whatever, belong to me and they would wrap it up and put it under the tree. And I'd be looking all over that hammer and I'd all them shoes. I'd be, God damn, I know I didn't just throw my shoes away. Well, come find out, Michael and Michael and, and Kimberly done, done, done wrapped them up, put them under the tree. But anyway, what I want to talk about. Michael was about a year and a half old. And Michael wasn't house broke, you know? He wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't house broke yet. And, and I always tell them the story how Christmas time is better to give than receive, you know? How, how, if you know somebody needed something Christmas time, you know, leave a part of you to, to tell them how much you care. Well, one year Michael took me literally serious about that. Boy, one morning, one night I got there, you know, and I was sitting there, me and Tina were looking at the tree. And the kids done tore it down, so we were putting it back together. Well, I smelled something funky. And I got to looking around the house. I got looking everywhere, you know, and went to the tree and started working on it. And, Damn, boo! So bad. And and, and I, I said, uh, what the fuck is that smell? It's rotten. Man, I got looking at got, I grabbed one of them bags, you don't know, smell it, nothing. It smelled all right. Pick up another present and smell it. All right. I picked up one present with half ass rat. Jesus fucking Christ! Michael and, and, and Kimberly had to took one of his damn shitty ass fucking diapers and wrapped it up and put it under the tree. I asked him, why y'all do that for? Jesus Christ, it stinks! And Michael said, I give it upon me, Daddy. I give it upon me. I, I didn't understand what he said, but I had to laugh. It was funny. I wanted to beat his ass. But that was the year when Mike was about a year and a half old, wasn't, wasn't house broke yet, and he, he shit in a he took a shitty diaper off, wrapped it up, and put it under the tree! How about that, bigger boy? Everybody knows you get shitty diapers for goddamn Christmas now. <laughs> you know, youngest, y'all know an awful lot about me and what goes on in my life and my past history and I remember this taking me back to Christmas when my old son Charles and Jennifer and Kimberly were basically babies, you know? And I was working for the fire department and I done caught a fungus in my foot and I couldn't work, had no money coming in and rented a place with a guy called Henry Brown. He's, 
he later became our congressman. And it was a slum. Come on, let's face it. You know, we couldn't afford much. I think my rent was $235 a month. Tina wasn't working. She had no job. Wasn't even thinking about it, you know. And it was Christmas time. And we had very few funds. And back then, you know, we didn't know nothing about going to the Salvation Army and all these other organizations that you can get help from at Christmas time. Toys for Tots. God bless Toys for Tots. <clears throat> and I remember we didn't have a... We lived across the street from an old auction house. And every Saturday night, there was a big auction. Well, that Sunday morning, I got up and got looking at the trash. Cause people buy that stuff, you know, if they didn't want it, they'd throw it out in the trash pile. Well, I'd go look at the trash pile. Something that I could sell in the flea market or something, you know? Well, so that Sunday morning, man, it was like two weeks before Christmas. Didn't have much money. Didn't have food stamps back then. Well, they had them, but I, I really didn't know how to go about getting them, and I had nobody to help me get them, so. That old shack we lived in, man, concrete floor. But neither here nor there. It was, a bad, it, was a bad, it was a bad year. We went to... Uh, I went around looking at that trash and somebody done throwing out a piece of a Christmas tree. Now, it, it wasn't the whole tree, it was just the top half. And I dug it out the trash, took it home, put it on the, put it on the table, because it was small, you know, a little small thing. Went and got some, found some decorations out there, we put that on the tree. And it was a pretty little, it was, it was a Charlie Brown tree, I'll tell you that right now. It was a, definitely a Charlie Brown tree. But you know something? That little tree was pretty to me. And the kids, they didn't care because they were so little. All they saw was the lights. Ah, oh, pretty lights, Daddy. Pretty lights. Didn't know we were going to give them for Christmas, you know, but they had the tree. And I, I found a little part-time job. Old man Brown. Mr. Henry Brown gave me, gave me a job doing some work for him, you know, patching a few sinks and you know digging up some sewer lines and stuff I, I made enough money that 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 two days before christmas he gave me the money he owed me and tina and i went out and we bought the kids toys mind you wasn't a whole lot but it was a lot more than what they were going to have because back then me and my mama wasn't talking she just owned me and my mama just owned me for almost two years never spoke a word to me life but we gave them we got them toys and that little Charlie Brown tree and Christmas Eve we put the, they are all excited you know daddy daddy Santa's coming tonight Santa's go oh yeah he's coming yeah I swear he's coming I promise and they had a hard time going to sleep bless their little hearts but they finally dozed off and when they dozed off Tina and I went and we got everything out of the car Put into the tree for him, you know, and uh, that Christmas morning, they woke up, they ran to the tree, and out of Jennifer's mouth, she said, Daddy, Santa didn't forget us, he does love us. And I said, well, baby, why didn't you think Santa Claus loved you? She said, because little Mary at school told me we were too poor and Santa Claus wasn't coming to our house. You know, Kids can be cruel. They can hurt. Teach your children not to make fun of other kids who really don't have what they got. Because the day is coming when... I really don't know how to say this. You know, it's just... I really don't know how to say this, but... Teach them not to make fun of other, other kids just because they've got something other kids don't have. That hurt Jennifer, that little girl. But Jennifer never told me about that. Not till that Christmas morning. I remember crying and loved cussing on her and said, Baby, Santa loves you. Santa came to see you. And she took her baby doll and she hugged it and she loved it. Charlie, 
at a bounty metal, at bounty metal old bicycle. It was, it was, it was used at the thrift store, but it was a nice little bike, and he was happy. You know, he had him a bicycle, got him a cowboy hat. Uh, Jennifer got her little doll that she wanted, and some doll clothes. And then we bought them all, you know, some, some clothes. You know, they didn't have nothing to wear. The poor babies. Jennifer's shoes were so wore out that. Well, Nisa said we got a pair of shoes. Yeah, I think we had more bad Christmases than we had good ones. But you know something? They might have been bad. But they were good because we learned from them. We learned from them. Rest of this month, I'm going to be sharing a lot of stories with y'all. About my kids and Christmas. And the experiences. I love you, youngest. Merry Christmas to you. And let's get ready for Santa Claus. He's a pervert. He dresses in red. He's asking little kids to get in the sleigh. You want your kids getting in, getting in, getting in, getting in Santa Claus's uh, sleigh with him? Not me. Bust a cap in his ass. Bye, youngins. I remember little Charlie's first Christmas. <laughs> Back in those days, I was partaking in the hops real good. You know what I'm saying? I was drinking up on some beer. But we were staying with Tina's parents. Because Tina, yeah, that's Tina's Tina. But anyway, her mom wanted to stay with them for a while, while until she had the babies. I agreed to it, you know. Well, Charlie was born, and her mom, it was Christmas Eve, and her mom said, y'all get ready. I'm like, get ready for what? Said so we're we're going we're going to church. Ah, negative! I ain't going to no church. She said, but you don't understand. We're getting little Charlie baptized. I said, he ain't old enough. He ain't twelve. Yeah, but he's twelve years old. He can decide what he wants. Her mom said, he's getting baptized. And Tina, you know, he's gonna get baptized. That bitch can make some faces. So I said, all right, hell, I'll go along. About, uh, it'll come about 11 o'clock, and it was time to go to church. So we get down there with church, you know, in the old Catholic church, and uh, we got we brought his milk, but we didn't, we didn't bring it, bring his milk, his water. We always carried a bottle of water, put, you know, put it in, with his milk. Charlie started crying. Bleah, bleah, bleah. And I said, what are we going to do? She said, Go get some water so I can make his milk. All right, I'll go make his milk. Well, anyway, I went out, I walked out front. There was like a little water fountain there, right? It had a pond, you know, had a little little thing there full of water. I said, damn. So anyway, I got the water out of that little pond, and I and I put I put that can uh, I forgot to put that milk in there, you know. Got back in the church. <coughs> said, yeah. My mother law said, Where'd you get the water from? The kitchen's closed. I said, They had that little pond out front that, on that pedestal. I said, I just got one. You should have done that. That's holy water. That's what that's what that's what they baptize babies in. That's what people when they come into church, they touch the water and sprinkle their head. I said, Well, goddamn, he's drinking any. Shut up. So I'm sitting there, man, I'm about half tied anyway, you know, in the pot. They go they go to bless little Charlie and they say, In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I say, yeah, praise the Lord, past the collection plate. Ha, ha, ha. Tina poking me inside and shut up, you're in the church. God damn right, I know I'm in the church. He's hauling, ain't he? So anyway, I said, okay, I ain't put up with shit no more. So anyway... Went to got home from church and mother-in-law ain't talking to me. So I said, what's wrong with you? You ain't talking to me. She said, you showed your butt in church. I said, I ain't show my butt nowhere. She said, you acted like a complete idiot in that church about, that, about, that, about the baby's milk. I didn't want to do that. I put the goddamn water in the, in the diaper bag. We'd have had water and I wouldn't have had to get it out of the goddamn holy water. I said, hey, but just ain't done with Ma. He got holy water. That means he's good to go for the rest of his life. Means you'll never have to worry about vampires. She's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, 
That's what happened with Charlie's first birthday when, when Grandpa went to the Catholic Church for the first time. Watch all them priests out there wearing their dresses and stuff, man. Come on! Men don't wear dresses! Bye. So I didn't really get to film everything that happened in there, but explain to me what I just witnessed. That Darius goddamn sister, man, trying to tell me I'm still in love with Tina. Not, I'm talking about the original Tina. To my mom. Yeah. Ain't love with that goddamn she crazy drug head, bitch. She thinks she's so in love with mom. Don't, don't call her drug head. <laughs> Got time for that fucking woman no more. It's been over a year it's enough. Man. It's been well over a year. And the goddamn bitch still won't leave me alone. So she thinks she's so low. Yeah, but you was hitting on her. Who? On Derek's sister. Damn right she's hot. Ain't nothing wrong with a little chocolate. So we just left the substation. And I didn't film a lot. A matter of fact, I only filmed probably 15 seconds worth. I'm gonna show it to you now. Take a look at this. I am Mac Daddy. I am at, I got, I got two honeys right there, man. They're hot too, you know. They, they didn't think I'm hot. Oh, hot. What's on these 19s? Oh, darling, let me think. Seafood. I don't know. You know, you ever, you know, seafood, all the food you see, I eat. Uh, just, just put them, put, put. Mike, I'm not beat you. Get me off of there. Put some banana pepper. Put her all over it, Mike. Put her everywhere. Mike, I'm not beat you. You, too. you ain't gonna do nothing. So that was what happened in the substation. Man, I'll tell you. It's that way every time I go in there with her. I think she's flirting with me. I think she's really hitting on me. Well, of course she is. She thinks hey, you're hot. If I date her, you think Derek give us free subs? Hey, that's a good question, ain't it? Hey, I might marry her. Derek be my damn brother-in-law. Oh, shit. Hey, man, we, we get a piece of the substation then. Damn right. Can you imagine subs every night for supper? Man. Yeah, do it. I'm okay. I, I give you my, my approval. I got your blessing, Michael. Yep, you got my blessing. I'll walk oh, you down the aisle. Damn. There was a period of time before we left the substation. We were talking. You got a period? No, I did not. There was a period of time before we left the substation. Yeah, every it was upon time. You probably didn't have periods. No, see, the better joke for that would have been, yeah, the period time was. I don't know. Now I don't fuck them. Every thirty days. Hey, let me tell you, men have periods, okay? That's what Bridget tells me. We just me don't bleed. Time. Bridget tells me that all the time. Men have periods. We just don't bleed, but we do get moody. Watch it. I don't gotta watch it. I watched you for all my life. Like you, 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 you watched a real man. <laughs> I watched the real men ragging like every day. You remember the time I was cooking that barbecue chicken out there? I come over work, it was like eight, seven, eight o'clock. And I got the chicken going, man, and the coals weren't going out, and Charlie bought a whole goddamn can of charcoal lighter on that fucking chicken. Yeah. I don't remember he was a kid. I've heard the story. Oh God! I had a whole chicken. I had a whole damn grill full of chicken, and because it wasn't blade flaming, Charlie took a goddamn can of charcoal lighter and poured it all over that motherfucker. God damn! So I got a better story to tell than Charlie dumping freaking charcoal. You ain't never as good as me. So one time, see, every family function uh, we had on mom's side, we had no family functions on dad's side. But we'd have family functions. My family never cared. My, we had family functions on, on mom's side with my aunt and yeah, we weren't invited my myself. uncles. That's another story. <laughs> but some of the times we were. You remember the time? You remember the time they had the cookout they called? Say, y'all come over, we're gonna have a cookout. Now we ain't had no money. I don't, I don't wanna tell that story yet. I wanna save that one. All right. That's a, Cause that's a good one. That was a big family dispute. Yeah. But this one is one of the ones we did show up at. And, and every, uh, uncle, my uncle, he was like, uh, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run the, I'm gonna, I'm talking about the other uncle, oh. Uncle Tony. You mean Mr. Nick. So Uncle Tony wanted to run the grill. I'm gonna cook on the grill. And so he's cooking, he decides he's gonna cook it, but then dad starts the grill. So dad starts grilling the food, which meant all the food burned. That's which, a fucking lie. Uh, is it? We were in like a park here in North Charleston. You built, you grilled all the food out, it burned. And Aunt Deborah had to go to the freaking KFC and get chicken and mashed potatoes and shit because you burned all. That's the a goddamn lie! Yeah. I did not burn a motherfucking thing. You're lying, you son of a bitch! You were lying. Why do you? you Why are you gonna lie on me? Oh my god! Ew! Why you gotta lie on me? That was the truth. My teeth came out. I saw that. Yeah. Hey, youngers. You know, when I was a kid. Somebody died, 
and we'd go to the funeral and you showed respect you you didn't you, you went to the funeral because you know somebody you know they were thought of you know so and you sit there you were attentive and you listen to the people talk man god damn it's getting hot in here fuck you know, and, and, and the people would get, they get their eulogies. Oh, he was a good man. We'll miss him. Or, she was a fine lady. She was a mama nine. And she's gone. Mama's gone. Anyway. And if, if a child went to a funeral, and he was playing with a little toy soldier, and he was laughing, he was, ah, ha, 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 ha. If I'd done that, my daddy would have cut my ass. My mama would have slapped me against the wall. I wouldn't have known what hit me. Misbehave at a funeral? Are you fucking crazy? Hell no. Nah. Not me, man. I'm good. But Nelson Mandela had a, had his funeral yesterday. You know, a memorial and. Our president was there. President Barack Obama. He was there representing our country, representing me. He was sitting there. And was he quiet? Was he reverent? No! He was playing with his cell phone. He was laughing. He was having a party. He was talking, oh, they got this little honey over there, man. She's, I guess she's the prime minister of some, some, some little blonde. Oh, my God, she was hot. Flirt with her. Hey, Brock, you want to tag that bitch? Do it on your own time. Ha, ha. Oh, damn, Mandela's funeral was a party for you, Barack. You had a good time. Who were you texting? The little blonde from that country? Ooh. Because that picture of you tells it all, bro. You know, Michelle ain't a bad looking woman, bro. You want to stay at home. You know, you want to wiggle your dick? Yeah, there's a place to do it. Not in some goddamn other blonde headed woman's face. I think I'm saying this mostly because you are very disrespectful. If you were my kid, I would bust your ass. You'd have gone home. You'd have gone to bed without supper. Do us a favor, President. When you go to a funeral, keep your mouth shut, keep your phone in your pocket, and wipe that motherfucking smile off your face. Show respect to the dead. Ah! Grandpa dropped the gun a few days ago. I got all over President Obama, Obama about how I would cut his ass. If I went to a funeral and he acted like that, texting and shit. But you know, I found out something. It wasn't no funeral. It was a, it was like a, a, a celebration of life. They had, they, had, they had bands out there playing, music going. This shit was four hours long. It was four hours long. So I kind of owe President Obama an apology. Whoa. Ooh. President Obama. I'm the angry grandpa, and I'm sorry from the bottom of my asshole <laughs> for accusing you of playing in a funeral. But you sly motherfucking dog. God damn! We got a new slick wheel. Fred, you outdid Bill Clinton. I ain't lying. That bitch is hot. Whoa! And the look on, on, on Michelle's face was like, all you gotta do is give little Michelle a little kiss on the cheek, remind her who she is, and she'll forget all this shit. But come on, friends. God damn, give me a high five, man. You got that bitch wired out. You know, when you see the pictures, it is, you know, first we got. Woo! And you got Michelle. You got one picture, she's going. Yeah! You got one, and then finally she's sitting in between them in a picture. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was in between them too. Yeah. But, but I'm proud of you, friends. You picked the hottest bitch in the motherfucking memorial. Yeah. I ain't lying. Yeah, when Bill Clinton, he aimed low. Oh, <laughs> Bill Clinton, he had what? Monica Lewinsky? Ah, damn! Obama got him some, like, Obama got him notch. a notch. He got him a hot woman. Woo! Man, 
Obama out getting them Danish gals, they hot. They sitting that goddamn cold all winter long and that old, that old thing gets all frozen shit. You come along with your motherfucking Hawaiian heritage, you eat that bitch up! <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry I said about your goddamn playing in a funeral. And I gave you a high five, Prince. You take that hot bitch. Yeah, you go. You need to go over there for some kind of official visit. Go for it, Prince! <laughs> oh my god, is that what your face looks like when you're doing it? <laughs> That's what Bob's gonna look like on that date. <laughs> Congrats on your new woman, man. Should we be saying this? We're, this is just our opinion. Yeah, We're joking. Hey, come on. That's the way it looked to me. I was watching the news yesterday. And I heard a report about a 16-year-old in fucking Texas. The boy is 16 years old. He got drunk, got into his, have you heard this, Bridget? Have you heard this one? No. Okay. Got into his fucking truck, drunk, caused a wreck in Texas. Now, I'm emphasizing Texas for a reason. He went to court. Now, in that thing, four people were killed. A mother, her daughter, and I think it was two cousins or something like that. Plus, there were two people seriously hurt. One is brain dead and still they, they keep him alive. So this boy goes to court. He hires a lawyer that's smarter than against old Jose. His defense was he's a rich kid and his parents spoiled him and that's why he did it. And he won! The motherfucker got 10 years probation! and can't ever be seen with his parents for 10 years. Are you fucking killing me? Really? 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 Texas, you're as fucked up as Florida. At least they let two goddamn murderers go. You all let one. Really? I'm rich. And because my parents bought me, I get away with murder? Motherfuck, I can't take this goddamn no goddamn more. I've had it. The legal system in this country fucking sucks. It sucks. People get away with murder. 16 years old. Motherfucker ought to be in the death chair. But because he's rich. That's why I'm starting to hate rich people. I'm turning against rich people. God damn, their money buys anything. If you're rich, you can get away with murder. You can get these shyster fucking lawyers two or three dollars and they'll get you off murder. Jesus Christ, I'm starting to hate attorneys. Them shyster motherfuckers. Them to get these people off. For money, I, oh, God, yeah, and then, I can't even talk about this no more. Oh, my God, I can't. Google it. Read about it. Find that lawyer and tell him he's a goddamn scumbug. Man, bye, I gotta go. Man, fuck this. I can't do How you feel? Man, God. That dog's been barking ever since you went in. That motherfucking dog. Don't say nothing. I ain't saying a word because I don't want no trouble with her. Okay. So, yes, I answered hate mail. You know, I done gotten. Had a young send me ten dollars today, boy, for Christmas. Somebody sent you ten dollars? Hell yeah, I got ten dollars in my pocket now. Ten dollars. You can't get it. it. Ain't yours. I'm not trying to get your ten dollars. You ain't gonna get it. I ain't get my ten dollars. It's my Christmas present. I'm not trying to take your ten dollars. Oh, you want my ten dollars for? I don't want it. You ain't getting it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Understood. You know, you come over here, you, you find I got ten dollars, you come here and give it. I didn't even know about it. My God, Michael. Yeah, I'll go. I, I, I'll give it to you. Oh, good God, Dad! I'm joking. That's five. That's so all you I got left. Spend it. So you promised me ten dollars, and now you're not even. And I didn't promise you ten dollars. You come here and steal ten. I'll give you five. Why do you want to take my money for, man? I don't. I got that in the mail today, Michael. What made you think this? <laughs> well, I just told you I had ten dollars, and you want to take it from me. I don't want to take it from you. Why you want ten dollars, Michael? So what else did you get in the mail? Ten dollars. Are people sending you Christmas presents? Ten dollars. 
I like that ten dollars, boy. Yeah, a lot of people would ask me what your PO box. Well, is. they ain't sending me nothing. Where is it? Because I don't know what your PO box is. <sighs> it's PO box here. I don't know either. Bridget knows it. I'm. So, I don't know how I'm supposed to tell people what your PO box is if they want to send you something if I don't know it myself. I don't. I don't even know it. What's one of the packages somebody sent you? A letter or anything? Oh, I got a letter. I got a card. With a card. They told me you'd like the uh, you'd like the stamp. Go get it. I don't know what to do with it. So are they gonna tell me, send me something that I'm gonna like, and you ain't gonna let me it's know. It's on what? my card. We'll go get it. Well, we can get the PO box. Okay. I lost the stamp. You lost the stamp. Yeah. Oh, is this your P.O. Box? That's my P.O. Box. Okay. Grandpa's P.O. Box. That's P.O. Box. Okay. Charles Green, P.O. Box 51734, Somerville, South Carolina, 29485. Hey, you know Christmas is two weeks away? Are you doing Santa calls this year? <laughs> Fuck yeah! What was that boy's name? Dominique. Must be your Dominique. So this year, Grandpa's doing more Santa calls. So, on Grandpa's Facebook page, you want them to call you, <laughs> message them with the number. Yeah, quit inboxing. No. They, they post it on your wall. You're right, them some retarded motherfuckers. Don't y'all know people gonna get your number and goddamn troll y'all? I've, I've had to take some people off because I knew they, would go, they were low age. So, Santa calls this year, they're coming. They're gonna come on Christmas Eve. Please. I understand you want to talk to Grandpa, but, you know, some of y'all, please, somebody send somebody with a kid, because... Send me a present, I'll call you. <laughs> you are slimy. I know that, thank you. You are slimy. Send me a present, I'll call you. Send me a Walmart, no, don't send me a Walmart gift card. So, send him Walmart gift cards. Hell no, I can't go to Walmart! Jesus Christ, you know that, Michael! <laughs> you should get it anyway. I damn sure ain't gonna give them to you! You can use them at Walmart.com. I'm sure they don't know your address. They know my name. You know, when I was a kid, <laughs> you know, it gets Christmas time, I start thinking about things that used to happen and all, you know? But when I was a kid, I, I, you know, I used to go to Sunday school. Well, let me rephrase that. I was made to go to Sunday school. I didn't want to go to Sunday school, you know? Has, you know, sitting there with a bunch of guys, you know, and they talk about, well, back in Zacharias, was walking around Bethlehem and, 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 you know, bullshit. I ain't care about all that crap. Anyway, my mama made me get in a, be in a play. I was a little fella, you know, I was like seven year, eight year old, you know? And I, Grandpa, AGP, I was a shepherd. I had a staff. And I wore a dress. Cried about that shit because I didn't want to wear no dress. I'm a boy. Boys don't wear dresses. But I was told it was well, whatever the name of the garment is. But they didn't, they didn't, they didn't wear, they didn't wear jeans and that shit back in them day. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, it was Christmas time though, and I wanted some presents for Christmas, so I figured I'd better to go along with the program. So anyway, I'm a shepherd, you know, a little Billy, you know, little Billy Muncy. He's a, he, he was. He was one of the, the, the farm animals, you know, he was a cow. And, 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 and Joey Pickford, he was a, he, he was he, he was one of the shepherds. And, but anyway, big short story. We're sitting there, you know, and all of a sudden there's baby Jesus, you know, in there with Mary, which the girl playing Mary was fucking ugly, man. I ain't lying. I, I would have kissed that bitch with, with I, oh hell, I would have kissed her with your lips. I ain't lie, that one ugly little girl. Had zits all over her face, man, and fucking hair was all scroungy looking, you know. <coughs> Never forget that guy. And her name was Mary, come to think of it. But anyway, we're standing there in the manger scene, you know, and we're being real quiet, you know, and all of a sudden, it got, well, all the, the, the cow, you know, the, and the animals, there, they, they, it was got real quiet. And all of a sudden, little Billy Muzzy, the goddamn bad animal, motherfucker, farted! <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, for a goddamn six-year-old, that was the longest and the loudest fart I ever heard in my life. Well, <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> Billy farted! <laughs> And no old gal made that that was directing the play. Be quiet, be quiet. Stop! 
Jesus, buddy, you really, you'd have thought he was a goddamn cow. That motherfucker outstunk a skunk. Man, all of a sudden, man, people started smelling that shit, you know, and all of a sudden, that, 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 they had a real baby that was playing baby Jesus. Well, that baby started crying. I know that baby smelled that motherfucker. Couldn't handle that shit either. So, the mother came and she got little baby Jesus. I laughed so goddamn hard that... <laughs> I laughed so goddamn hard they took me off the damn stage. <laughs> little Billy Muzzy, he was so goddamn embarrassed. He didn't know what the fuck to do. Ha <laughs> ha! But Jesus Christ. You know... I remember that, it was just funny, you know, those, those kind of things happen. And it was just funny. Motherfucker farted like a cut. Oh my god. Sound like one of them little machines, you know. <laughs> anyway, that was a short lived major scene play. Laugh my ass off. Never forget it. And I think to this day, I can still remember that motherfucker. I think that motherfucker had sausage and sauerkraut or something for goddamn supper that night. That was one stinky little motherfucker. And that was Christmas back when I was about six years old. Bye! You know, this, this is a more of a personal vlog. You know, about, about over a little over a year ago, <clears throat> I had this nemesis. They call, he called himself the irate... What the fuck? That's what I was wondering. What is going on? Who knows? He called himself the irate American. Oh, and he could talk some shit. He was on me bad. Oh my God! I, I would, re I would, I would watch his videos and, you know. One day, he and I talked. We got messaged each other. You know, we got talking. You know, the irate American. He's like me. He's old man. But he he's set in his ways, and he, he believes like he believes, and he's got strong opinions about America and about things that happen in America. And we would talk about that, you know. And we then also we just we discussed the weather, you know, because he was from Chicago, and, and we talk about how cold it was there, you know, and stuff like that. But he's a good old man. He's a good friend. I just found out last week that health-wise, he's not doing too good. I also found, you know, it's kind of hard to say things about somebody that when you when you really feel bad, you know, and you really like to people, and, and, and you know, the words just aren't there. This is one of those vlogs. So, I read American, I just want you to know, I'm thinking about you. If you're a YouTuber, you, you need you need to to, to to start to care more about other YouTube because we're a family too. Sure, we have our family at home. We have our family of, of youngins out there, or y'all call them fans. But then you got the YouTubers, and we're family too. And when one when when one of our family members is sick and down and out. We need to be there to, to, to listen, to, to, to think about them, keep them in our thoughts. So this vlog goes out to my friend, the irate American. I love you, man. Take care of yourself. That's all I got to say, Mike. I don't want to tell that story. But the story needs to be told. Why do you think that? Because when you were little, you were a piece of shit. I'm going to tell a story, so you might as well just hold a camera. Let me tell y'all. Let me tell you a youngest grandpa here. Many, many years ago, you, you all know about my mama dying, yada, 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 you know, blah, 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 okay. And the year, I want to tell you about the year after my mama died. It was Christmas time. Uh, I had no money at all. You know, we, we said, why did we never have no money at Christmas? I don't know. Anyway, literally, no money. And Michael won an Xbox game. Xbox wasn't even out yet. What was it? Nintendo 64. He wanted a Nintendo 64. I wanted. Uh, yeah, I'll tell the story. I wanted No Mercy, the, internet, the wrestling Nintendo 64 game. Anyway, Mike begged me, Dad, please. That's all I want for Christmas. And I'm like, Son, we can't afford it. I'm sure I haven't, buddy. We don't know who Paxton is. His brother. Oh, I don't know, buddy. Go check the woods. Hey, smile. That's what Michael looked like as a kid. Oh, no. 
That's that what Michael looked like as a kid. But anyway, back to the story. I tell Michael, I say, Michael, I can't afford the son. I got no money now. You want that game? That game, I forgot how much that game was. 60 bucks. 60 bucks. And I didn't have 60 bucks, you know. I was lucky to go to Dollar Family Dollar somewhere and buy a bunch of little toys to play with. But anyway, Michael, he hurt my feelings so bad that I went in my room and cried because I couldn't give my son what he wanted for Christmas. Upset the hell out of me. I don't like telling this story. So Michael just kept nagging and nagging and nagging. And Michael, Michael was full like a balloon. Well, puff up, you know, like a blowfish. And and so I told Michael, well, we can't afford it. Well, his uncle Bobby gave all the kids money for Christmas. And he, you know, he he had a little savings account, and every year he'd take it out, he divided it among all the grandkids. So, Michael got hold of his money. Michael, I got money. I can do what I want. Well, Kim knew he didn't have enough money to pay for this game. So, Kim, hmm. Kim gave up her Christmas present from Uncle Bobby, the money that she got. And she put it with Michael's and went and got him that game that he wanted, that he wanted so bad. Which was nice. I'm glad, you know, Kim loves her brother. I, I think I, all four of my kids, those two loved each other more than any of them. They still do. And, but Kim was like so excited. Even though she didn't have any money, I felt bad because she gave her money to Michael. So I said, well, Michael, you got your game. You happy? You know Michael tell me? Ha, ha, ha. You couldn't get it, but I used my, I used my money. Uncle Bobby gave me to get the game. Ha, ha. I got the game, Dad. Oh, my God. Cut me like a fucking knife went right through me. Oh my god, I was so hurt. So I want to throw it on record that that is not who I am anymore. I don't accept gifts from people anymore for one reason because the year gra the the year grandma died. Which God, this is just Michael's a piece of shit video. Oh, we're talking about no, we're not talking about grandma down. We're talking about Michael being a piece of shit and no. he couldn't get a 360 game. Nintendo 64. Well, whatever. No, no. This is now turning into Michael's a piece of shit. See, but Michael was a piece of shit. The year before, when my grandma died, uh, she died on Christmas morning, and everybody knows that. I, no one knows this Quit part though. To take it off you. This is on me. Listen, I woke up and my sister Kim was over me crying, and she goes, she, and "I said, what's wrong, Kim? Grandma's dead." And the first thing that I said was. Are the presents still there? <laughs> yeah, he worried more about them damn presents. I didn't go to my grandmother's funeral. Why? Why didn't you? Why didn't you go? Because uh, there was another wrestling game that I had that I wanted to play instead. I'm not. I don't hide from this stuff. I was a piece of shit. But you know something? You turned out to be a good boy. I, I, you know, after that Christmas. I have to admit, you, you, you give freely now. It took a few years for me to realize what I did. It took a few years for me to say, okay, I was a piece of shit for Christmas. But the moral of the story, youngins, is think before you talk to somebody about something you're not getting for Christmas and be appreciative of what you do get. How about you, Michael? I agree. You're yeah, right. <laughs> I do agree. I don't, I don't hope nobody gives me anything for Christmas this year. Well, you got your wish with me. <laughs> I ain't got no money. I can't buy you nothing this year. Well, I got you something real good. Yeah, right. I did. I got you something real good. Salvation Army again? No, no. I spent money on you. Another goddamn coffee pot that didn't last a week? I spent $500 on yours. Oh, hell no, Mike. I did too. Mike, you need to take it back and get your money. <laughs> I know you're being serious, and I really did, and I'm not taking it back. Take it back, Michael. No, I won't. Take it back. This is the first time I'm able to get you something good for Christmas. I wanted to get something for good, Dad, for Christmas. I'll give you a Snicker bar, big one. I've already been eating on that motherfucker. You've been eating on that goddamn Snicker bar? Yeah, the one on the counter? Yeah, that's yours. Yeah, I done opened an eight on it. Oh my god! I was hoping to get you to freak out about it. I guess I guess you don't care or something. Well, like, how am I? How am I going to get goddamn Snickers? All the nuts. What's going on, you guys? Pickle Boy here. And the other day, while I was editing the new video where Grandpa made me his bitch, I stink, man. I'm gonna go. Do, you need to help me in the shower. What? Help me to take a bath. What does that mean? Means I need you to put me in the shower and help wash myself. I can't do that. I, you're gonna have to do it. I can't do it. I can't bend over nothing. Really? I need my nut washed, alright? Come on, help me. Hey! I'm, no, I'm no. not doing that! You're helping your daddy. No, I won't do it. Hey boy, come on, come on. Dead barn, help me up! I'm sorry, Dad. Now! 
I'll go down here, Johnny. You're not helping me. I'm you a, don't ever do nothing for me. I'll call Tina over here. No, God, you saw my goddamn dick. You take me in there right now and give me my back. Yeah, I'm gonna call Tina. Now! I was editing the video together, and I noticed on the third camera angle, the one that he had sitting on his chair, there were some video files that I had never seen before, and they were of Grandpa when he was shopping for his little tree at Big Lots. So, as bad as they made me feel looking at them, because I did make fun of it, and I saw how excited he was in the videos, here they are. I wanted to show them to you guys. This is the video that Dad had filmed for his little tree. Okay, youngest, here I am in Odd Lots. Look at all these trees. They got good supply this year. Always get me one from here. Oh, that's a beautiful tree. Oh my God, I like the blue one. Oh my God. Oh, that's a beautiful tree. I gotta look at that one closer. Oh man, I can't believe that tree. That tree is 20 bucks. Oh, lit up pretty. Grandpa needs a tree. Let me see what else. Let me see. Oh, I like that one too though. I ain't paying for dog, no damn tree. I need a Furniture line one, furniture line one. Oh, furniture my ass. Anyway, I'm gonna pick me out a tree and the ornaments, and I'm gonna go home, and I'm gonna decorate it for you youngins. <laughs> it's a Merry Christmas at our thoughts. Well, here we go. I'm, I'm leaving Odd Lots. And as you can tell, old grandpa and I went and bought him a Christmas tree. And all, spent 60, <laughs> spent 67 damn dollars in that damn store. I can't believe that shit. For a Christmas tree. Fucking Santa Claus. Anyway, I'm on my way home. I'm gonna be decorating. So, see you later, youngins. Bye. So, that was it. I just wanted to show you guys that. Dad, I apologize for being on the, the on your video. I just wanted to present it to everybody because, you know, it's something you obviously wanted to be shown. So, there it was. So, there you go, you guys. Alright, Dad. The first number is to a person who says you're fake. On what? She thinks all your videos are fake. <laughs> Give me that bitch's number. Hello? Yeah, is this, is, this a, is this a guy that wrote Grandpa? Oh yeah, this is him, Grandpa. I would've told you that goddamn wizard said I'm fake. She, uh, she, oh my God, she's in the shower. I told you, man, tell her quit playing with that thing. That'd constitute playing oh, with yeah. yourself. <laughs> she, she is in the shower. Oh my God, that sucks. Yeah, that sucks. Um, if, I, I'll tell you what, if you call and just leave me a voicemail, that'll be good enough. Oh no, man, I, 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 I want to talk to her. I'll call back, yeah, wait, I'll call back in a while, about 15 minutes? Yeah, that, that'll, that'll be great. All right, brother, take care. Uh, thank you so much, man. Bye. Bye. Tell you one goddamn, what, I don't fuck this goddamn. Hello? Nice beat to Nick. This is Santa. Oh, ho, 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 ho. This is Santa Claus. Ho, 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 ho. How you doing, Santa? Hey, I'm doing good. Uh, uh, listen, oh, what do you want for Christmas, little boy? You are a little boy, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a little boy. What do, you want, what do you want for Christmas, son? Uh, just everyone to be happy and for you to have a good night Christmas. Fuck that shit. How can anybody be goddamn happy? We got Obamacare. Jesus Christ, man. Don't you read the paper? How can anybody be happy with all that goddamn shit going on? Hey. Okay. Now, now speak to Caitlin. What? <laughs> now speak would you shut up a goddamn minute? Please record your message. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you did one goddamn thing when I got you. You know, got the... <sighs> In hell with that, I ain't. <laughs> the answering machine tricked you. Goddamn machine, man. Fuck. Where you going? I'm going inside. Now speak to Caitlin. Yes, this is her. This is Santa Claus. Hi there! Oh my god! Kayla, what do you really what do you want for Christmas? Oh, um, I don't know. What do you want for Christmas? Uh, I don't know. 
Well, then why the hell did you want me to call you? Do you know anything? No. Where are you from? Kentucky. That explains the that explains the whole situation. Are you teeth rotten? No. <laughs> Everybody else in Kentucky got rotten teeth. I figured they ain't got no dentists there. Well, I don't have rotten teeth. I don't. <laughs> are, are are they straight and everything? Yeah, they're straight and white. <laughs> and white? Whoa, 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 you prejudiced now? Okay, this next number is Gabriel. Gabriel, huh? Gabriel, come blow my horn. <laughs> what does that mean? <coughs> Ew. Did you swallow it? Had to. Oh, God. Oh, no, it ain't. It ain't a <laughs> <laughs> Quit laughing at me. Is it ringing? Yeah, it's ringing. Dumbass. You can't hear it? Gabriel, oh Gabriel, oh come and blow my horn. What was that? My lip itched. <laughs> Hello? Now speak to Gabriel. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Gabriel, this is Santa Claus coming, calling from North South Carolina Pole. How you doing? How <laughs> good is this? The Santa Claus! Who does that say I was? Who is it? It's... It's Angry Grandpa. It's Angry Grandpa, you dumbass! I can't... You're screaming too loud. I can't... I can't understand. It's Angry Grandpa, you dumbass. <laughs> you hear that? Gabriel? Yes? Where are you from? Doesn't matter. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Ignorance is fucking bliss, bro! Mike, where'd you get your goddamn people from? He wrote me on YouTube and said to call. I gave him his number down. God damn, you done write his number. He don't know where the hell he's from. Are you smoking dope? Oh. Is this yam? Yeah, I'm sure this. This, this Santa Claus. Hey, how's it going, man? Huh? I'm going to go. You, all right, you go ahead and hang up, boy. I'll talk to you later, yeah? I ain't been there to your goddamn place! Fuck you and fuck Griffin! You ain't getting up a goddamn call! Fuck you! <laughs> Kevin, he gonna hang up. <laughs> I'm gonna hang up now, okay? <laughs> yeah, now speak to my, uh, my, uh, my uh, Chance. <laughs> Just Grandpa. <laughs> Angry Grandpa! Hold on a minute. I. Who the fuck is Angry Grandpa, man? Angry Grandpa, Hey! What's up, Monopoly? What's up, Monopoly? Can I talk? Can I talk? What's up, What's up, Monopoly? <laughs> you didn't get the joke. Have you ever played Monopoly before? Oh, Monopoly? Yes. Oh, uh, you know there's a place where you take it, you get a chance card? Yeah. Where are you from? Yeah, you know, I watch you every day. Every day. You ain't got no life? No, not really. I've been watching you since ever since you made that YouTube video. Oh, okay, okay. And way back in the day, I'm just really shocked that you're talking to me right now. This is nuts. Well, what is like, as crazy. What do you want for Christmas? Uh, just be recognized on the video. It's good enough for me. Well, you gonna be on there. Rudolph the red nosed reindeer had a very shiny dick, and if you ever saw it, you would say it that it looks slick. Answer the phone. Hello, again! Hey, is this uh, Angry Grandpa Santa? Yeah, this is, yeah, this is this Angry Santa Claus right now. Alright, I got, uh, I got Jenna here. Jenna! Yeah? <laughs> what the hell are you doing calling me fake? You guys, you're, you're 
doing all this just to get people to watch your videos, so it's obviously oh, not no. real. Jen, I don't give a damn if you watch my video or not. Don't say damn, say fuck. I don't want to say fuck. I'm trying to be nice. Why would I want to say fuck? I'm trying to get a point across. If I say fuck, then she's going to say I'm crude, and nasty, and rude. <laughs> you are. All I know is you have like 3 million videos online, and my boyfriend sits here every single night watching videos. We're supposed to watch a movie, and then he starts watching your damn videos. We're more entertaining than your We're movies. more entertaining than they are. Yeah, we're probably more entertaining than you are. Right, well, please, please get her off my back. Please. Break up with her, man. You can find better. She, she, said, uh, she said I'm a loser because I watch her videos at night. This is all he does every night. He just wants to watch her videos. Because he is a smart, intelligent man. Hell, you probably like Doug Dynasty. Grandpa, what are we going to do about this? I really don't know, son. Only I, I, my advice to you is to kick her to the curb. And get a girlfriend that likes hanging grandpa. And get a girlfriend that likes hanging grandpa. Hey, grandpa. Tone it down over there. Where are you from, man? Jersey. Oh, hell, man. I know a lot of Jersey gals, man, you need to get up with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, man. I got a lot of Jersey girls that write me that, that love old grandpa. Man, I can hook you up quick. Uh, maybe we should do that. Hey! Hello? Yeah, I'm asking to Rhonda! This is her. Hey, Rhonda! This is Santa Claus! Oh my god, hey, grandpa! I didn't say grandpa! Hey, Rhonda! Hey, Santa Claus, how are you? What do you want for Christmas? Um, you know what I want for Christmas? Bridget. What are you doing on my phone, Bridget? I didn't call you. You called me. Michael, give me the number. I'm going to be Rhonda. Hey, Rhonda, <laughs> let's talk. It's Bridget. You yes, said Rhonda. Hey, Rhonda. <laughs> Rhonda. What do you want for Christmas, Rhonda? Rhonda, this is Bridget. Oh, man, God. Bridget, somebody did kiss my ass. Merry Christmas. Ha, 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 ha. What did you do that to me for? Hello. Hi. May I speak to Austin? Now huh? speak to Austin. No, this isn't Austin. Who, who you think this is? I don't give a damn who did. I know Austin wanted to call him goddamn Santa Claus. Well, what is this? This goddamn angry Santa Claus. Did you tell some just angry grandpa, Mom? I'm not even joking. Yeah, what about it? I, I, I'm angry Santa Claus. Your name is what? My name is Amber. Elmer. Amber. Amber. Yes, sir. I did Amber. Amber waves of green. And furthermore, I'll show you the door. Oh, hey, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Every time it goes on, I say, oh, God damn. <laughs> Is, is this Angelo Mike's mother? Yes. This is, this is Santa Claus. Really? Really? And how are yeah. you? I tell you, I don't know who you are, but it seems like Santa Claus forgot me for a couple of years. Well, darling, hell you out, I ain't gonna forget you this year. I no. promise you. Let's think, let's uh, think. Let's think a minute. Let me see, where would you know me from? Do you know me from church? I know your voice. Wait a minute, your voice, your voice. Um, Do you know me from church? Do you know me from YouTube? Oh my God! <laughs> no way, you are. Oh my God, you are. This is Angry Grandpa. Go ahead, I'll wait till you get it all out of the system. I want someone to watch my videos. 
Hey, what kind of, what, what, what do you cook? I'm gonna cook Lego flam, roasted potatoes, mm. roasted Lego flam with potatoes, green beans, Greek salad, uh, um, <laughs> uh, and, um... Can I come to your house? Stuff. Can I come? Absolutely, yes. You have no idea how much you entertain me. I watch you all the time. You, you're hilarious. You're so much fun. <laughs> you're making my head get big. Guess who's gonna be? Guess who's gonna be on the videos tonight? Oh, uh, who? You. Me? Yeah, we're filming. We're filming it right now. Me talking to you. Lucky, you have a nice Christmas, okay? Okay, you too, Grandpa. Grandpa, we love you, and, and God bless you, and uh, you're going to hear from me, okay? I'm going to send you something, okay? Thank you, darling. You have a nice... Tell Mike hello for me, yeah? I will. I will. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Bye-bye. Jesus fucking Christ! I'll tell you what, that is what I like to hear! You know, I wanna wish all you youngins, damn, that made me excited hearing her song that way. Damn, I'm glad I called her. I, I'm glad I called all you youngins. We, we couldn't call you all because it's just too many. But I'm still gonna be calling off and on tonight and tomorrow, Christmas Day. You might get a call from Grandpa. So, Merry Christmas, youngins. I hope you have a great evening. And listen out for your phone. Bye. Get rid of that camera. I'm through. Grandpa here. And I'm at my favorite place in the world. If I'm going to eat, ha, ha, got to be a substation. So let's go in and see what old Derek's doing. Derek. Hey, what's up, Grandpa? I'm losing my britches. How you doing, Derek? I'm doing good. I'm with Seth. You, you about ready for the New Year's yet? Well, God damn, let's shake that hand. Oh, yeah, right, shake, right. Yeah, we'll shake that one. How, how was Christmas? Christmas done over, and I'm happy. Done well, you know, over. You know, New Year's coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I figured I couldn't end the year because you're like my best bud. 2014. 2000. God. That, that's gonna it's be, hard to believe a year's gone yeah, by. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna have to be a good year. Anyway, <laughs> me and my buddy. Derek and I, we've been friends for how long now? Long time. How many years you reckon? It's been a long time. I work for Whitfield Construction Time, live right across the street. Been a while. Look at there. I, I was with the government. Yeah, I don't want your job to that. <laughs> anyway, what are your thoughts about the year? Anything? Uh, no, it's just, um, I just glad everything um, came and went. And I want to thank everybody for Toys for Tots. It was outstanding. All these kids, I wish I could have saw their faces in the morning to, to see how happy it was. But, um, but yeah, we collected over 42,000 toys. Wow. And um, you only need to give a bunch to the fire department to pass out. Yeah, we gave fire department a rest. Um, fire department, police department, they went out Christmas morning and got it to them. Yeah. Um, it, it was fantastic. It was just. And out of, let's see, 54 registrations, their phone got disconnected. So we couldn't contact them, but we had Rob Fowler of Channel 2 put it on the news. And that right there was uh, people responded. So I think we ended up maybe 18 people that never got toys. That is fantastic. That's so, a good ratio. Oh, yeah. What are, you, what are you looking forward to in 2014? Um... My birthday, I'll be 54 years old. 54! Ha ha! You're still a baby! Yeah, 54 years old. Yeah. God. Time is time is going. Time is going real real fast. Well, you know, Derek and I want to take this opportunity to wish each and every one of y'all a happy new year. Oh yeah. Uh we're still buds, we're always gonna be buds. As long as you keep making them sandwiches, hell, I'll marry you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, you, you want to marry me? I, I got you. Oh, God. Me and Derek get engaged. Ha, ha, ha. How you like that, Phil Robertson? Ha, 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 ha. Anyway, youngins. <laughs>
we want to wish you a happy new year and keep eating the substation. And when you're in the Charleston area, come to the substation on Dorchester Road, let Derek make it or his sister. Yes, sir. 2014, come and see me. All right. We tell you all later, youngins. Bye. Hey, fat ass. Hey, you fat piece of shit. Hey, how tall are you, man? My God, man, I didn't know they stacked fat shit that high. Oh, there's Charlie Green the Butterbean, the fattest thing I'd ever seen. I grew up listening to all that. I grew up hearing every fat joke ever made. When I was a little fella, I'd go run to my mom and my daddy. Why are they picking on me? Why do they call me names? Mom would say, they'll get theirs one day, boy. They'll get theirs one day, just ignore them. You know, it's hard to ignore people when you're being called stuff like that. It's hard to ignore somebody when they're blatantly dissing you. So what do you do? You get mad, you whip a couple of asses, what good did it do? Nothing. People are gonna be people. Kids are gonna be cruel, adults can be cruel. You know, I hear it now, I, I read some stuff, hey, you fat son of a bitch, well guess what, I am. I don't give a fuck. I'm very secure with who I am. Being fat doesn't matter. Call me fat. Call Michael fat. Michael will laugh at you too. You know, you think you hurt somebody, and a lot of people you do hurt, okay? There's a lot of people that, that, that wear their feelings on their shoulders. And when you say something to them that hurts their feelings, they want to cry. Or they want to pout. Or they want to, you know, You call me fat. I'll laugh at you. I think it's funny. Yeah, I am fat. Believe it or not, I am fat. I've been fat, you know, even when I was a kid, I was the biggest cookie in the box. And it, you know, it doesn't bother me, but it bothers me when you got, you got people out there that they don't, they may not be as pretty as you are. Ooh, or they might fart louder than you do. <sighs> but you know something? God damn, fucking chair was wet. God damn, I got a wet, I got a wet ass, motherfuck. It rained here yesterday. Anyway, damn, fucking ass cold. But you know, somebody that don't look like you. They're not as pretty as you. They can't afford to go out and buy the same clothes like you buy and wear. They can't afford to go to fancy restaurants to eat. And what do you do? You make fun of them. The, the worm's gonna turn. Could I guarantee you there ain't a motherfucker out there that I can't look at and talk to you five minutes and find something wrong with your ass. And if I wanted to, I'd have you crying to your fucking mama and say, Why is he being mean to me? Why is that old man doing this to me? Because you do it to other people. Best thing you do when somebody is, is, is making fun of you or calling you names or, or... I'm gonna tell you a cruel story in a minute. That's a true story. But when they start that shit, laugh at them. Because they're the ones looking like the fucking idiot, not you. You live in your life. You live in the way God made you. And trust me, there's somebody out there that wants to be with you. I got a lot of friends. Coming up with a kid, I didn't. Because I let what people say bother me. Now to my cruel story. I was a young fella, and there was a little girl in my class. Oh, I was in love with her, man. She was like this popular, you know. 
I was a little fat Charlie Green wearing blue jeans and and kids tennis shoes and had holes in my shirts and old piece of book bag and it didn't have nothing, you know? But I was in love with this girl. I used to write her notes, hi, I like you, you like me? All of a sudden one day she started she started writing me little notes back. Hi handsome, boy you're cute, you wanna go with me? I'm like, all right, man, I got me a girlfriend. I asked her to go to a movie. And, and so she said, sure, I want to go to the movie. So I told her, I said, well, how are we going, you know, what can we do? I want to take you to the movie. She said, well, meet me at the movie. Meet me, meet me at the Riviera Theater at the three o'clock movie. And me and you go in there and we'll watch that movie together and we'll hold hands. All right, man, I went and I cut some grass, you know, get me a little money in my pocket, you know, so I can buy a little girl a box of popcorn and a drink. So I jumped the bus, man. Went to the bus, went downtown, went to the Riviera Theater. There she was, standing on the corner. Hi, how you doing? Oh, man, I'm, I, 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 I care about you so much. And she started talking love talk, see? And where she was standing, it was like around this corner, see? And I was standing back on the side of here, and she was like, well, tell me, how much do you like me? I told her, oh, God, I love you so much. I want you to be my girlfriend. All of a sudden, she started laughing. And I heard some other laughter coming from around the corner. <clears throat> it was a bunch of the guys in the school. That's how they wanted to play a cruel joke on me. <laughs> oh man, I was so embarrassed. I went and jumped my fat ass bus. I went, I didn't go to school for three days. I was so embarrassed. They would come by my house on their bicycle and holler, Hey Charlie Green, little Mary Rotten Christ wants to see you. Ha 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 I'd laugh at me, you know, and I'd be like, I'm not going outside, Mama. I'm not going outside. Mama's son. You just did something that was natural. You liked somebody and you told her. About a year ago, the little girl died. She left behind three kids, a husband, a mortgage. <laughs> and I was with a bunch of old, old, the old gang from school, you know, we all ran together. You know, I got over all that shit, but somebody looked at me and said, you know, old Mary Rotten Crotch died. I said, really? Fucking bitch deserved it. <laughs> you know, you, you just, people remember shit like that. And if you heard somebody today, 20 years now, if you heard them bad enough, they're gonna remember it then. Do you really want that in your life? Do you really want to know that there's somebody out there that hates you for something that you said or you did? Listen, youngers, if you're fat, if you're ugly, if, if, if you don't wear the best in clothes, you don't have a lot of money, it's cool. We're all that way. Everybody has something wrong. Everybody has, a, has something that's, that's not quite right. Just go on with your life, man. Be the best person you can. Pull your heart out, man. Show your heart. Do what you're supposed to do in life. Become somebody. Upgrade yourself. Become a better person. And ignore them fuckers. They don't feed you. They don't pay your bills. All they can do is run their mouth. And at the end of the day, you're the one that's the much better person. You're the one that can go to bed at night and sleep with yourself, knowing that you did what you had to do that day to do what was right and meet what was good for you. I know this is a little lengthy, but I, I just happen to, I've seen a few things the past few days that I really didn't like it. I've seen people getting bullied and shit. And bullies, suck my dick, pick on me. I don't care, I'll laugh at you. 
you little you little uh, keyboards jockeys that like to talk your shit all you do is talking shit because you wouldn't get in your in somebody's face and say the same thing you say because you might allow but have to eat that motherfucking keyboard and one day you will talk to you on the next one I got a good one for you next time folks a real good one grandpa here as you see I'm sitting by the fire trying to trying to stay a little warm you know all this week I'm gonna be talking about the new year the past year this past year you know I lost my sister and I lost my niece lost a few other people that were important to me Derek lost his mother by the way in case he, didn't, he hasn't mentioned it Derek lost his mother at the end of the year right at the beginning of last year let me see had a lot of you youngest lost family but don't look at it as a loss. Look at it as, I'll meet see you later. Another time, another day. A lot's gone wrong in this country. You know, we got this Obamacare crap going on, you know, and so many people are unemployed and they don't, they don't have any money and a lot of them didn't get their kids what they wanted to for Christmas, but all that's gonna change. But what's it gonna take for it to change? It's gonna take us Americans to dig deep to dig deep inside ourselves and we can work our way out of this. We always have. We've always been able to, 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 to rise above the situation. And young as we can do it again, but we gotta have that faith. We gotta have to be willing to work for it. We have to be willing to sacrifice, to, to maybe to, to do this, maybe not go out deep tonight. But it'll get better as you go. I believe in our young people. I believe our, our young people, if we don't get out of this hole, our young people are going to get us out. They're going to figure a way. Damn sure ain't going to be no damn politician in Washington because they can't do it. They, can't, they don't even know which hand they wipe their ass with. So forget the politician people. We can do it. We, the people, we can overcome. We've had a lot of problems this past year with the race situation, you know. People, people hollering black this, a lot of black people hollering white that, but you know something, we're all people. People, people. Don't matter what color you are, it's what's in your heart, what's in your head. Are you willing to do what's right? Are you willing to, to work together? And I, I don't care what color you are, you're still my youngin, I love you. And y'all get along with me, whether you're white or black. Why can't you get along with other people that are not your color? There's no reason why you can't. All you gotta do is get the hatred out of your heart. We're not supposed to be haters. My God, if you're from, if you're from England, you're full-blooded. If you're from Scotland, you're full-blooded. If you're from Russia, you're full-blooded. If you're from America, you are mad! You got English in you, you got, uh, you got Scottish in you, you got Russian in you, you got German in you. We're not full-blooded nothing. I'm a mutt. I'm a high 57 dog. Maybe that's what's wrong with me. I don't know. So give up the color crap. Now, let's stop the gay bashing. Everybody says, well, why can the gays say what they want and we can't say what we want? Because y'all are too busy running your fucking mouths about the gays. It don't matter who you kiss, who you don't kiss, who you go to bed with, who you don't go to bed. First place, ain't none of your goddamn business. None of your business. It ain't my. If I worry about what's going on in my house and in my life, then baby, that's all I can handle. Trust me. You ain't got no family like I got. So if you're a gay basher, shut the fuck up. And if you're a gay talking about the straight guys, shut the fuck up. We can all survive this world together. There's room for all. And people get on me about what, what people on TV say about 
other people and that they have their right, that that's their red right to say what they want. It is their right to say what they want. And they should be able to say it. But they should also have to suffer the consequences when they quote stuff wrong. And it has happened. I'm not calling no names. Listen, my part is, is gay living right or wrong? Hmm, let me think. It ain't none of my goddamn business. It's his business. And he'll be the one to sort it all out. Not us. We judge nobody. Because one day, we're going to stand in front of the judge, and he'll take care of it all. Right then and there. <coughs> Let me see. What else I want to talk about on this little thing here? That's happened. There's so damn much happened this year, I can't even think about it all. You got that dude, uh, what's his name, George Zimmerman, that, that murdered uh, Trayvon Martin. Well, it's starting to come out to light now how, how really crazy that motherfucker is. Beating up on his girlfriends, pulling knives on them, guns on them, uh, going to jail. Jail's where the motherfucker belonged to start with. God, I don't know where to go. There's so much. I'll be going over to doing during the next week because there's a lot I want to say. There's a lot that needs to be said. But remember, get off ethnic groups. Get off. Get off everybody. Worry about what's going on in your life. I swear to God, I promise you, if you worry about what's going on in your life, in your backyard, in your family, you ain't got time to worry about nobody else. One more thing. One more thing that makes me happy. I think I get so many goddamn people with fictitious names writing me on my wall and shit, talking all kind of garbage. I love it. For now, and you get pretty soon, you can't go use your fictitious name. You're gonna have to. It's gonna have your name and your IP on who and where you're talking your shit from. So you little keyboard uh, of uh, warriors suck my dick. I said it, Grandpa. Right here, tell me, and I'll know who you are. And I'll get your ass. Talk shit to me. Talk shit to my youngins. Be a goddamn bully. You fucking bully. You only a bully behind a keyboard. Man, you Youngest, I'll be talking to you again tomorrow. Me and I, have a nice night. And from the fireplace, the, where's the fireplace? There it is. From the fireplace of where Grandpa's sitting in front of, in a nice chair, all relaxed, cool, calm, and collected. Love you, youngest. Bye. Hey, youngins. About 20 years ago, I went to, I, 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 I was so fat. I used to weigh over 800 pounds. I was almost 900 pounds, folks. I'm down to like 240 now. But back then, I was a fat fuck. I was in a wheelchair. I was on 15 pills a day for blood pressure, heart problems, um, gallbladder problems, uh, kidney problems, breathing machine. You used to have to go to bed every night on oxygen. Right. So I figured, well, I gotta do something about this. So I went and talked to a doctor and he recommended I get the gastric bypass operation. So I said, okay. Tell me what's involved, Doc. Well, he explained it to me. I said, well, I can do that. You know, he told me they were gonna go in there and they were gonna move some parts around my stomach, you know, and make my stomach wear the food, a little small pocket and blah, 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 and all that. So I said, okay, let's do it. I went and had the operation. And while I was on the table, I died. And they put a tube down my throat, you know, ventilator and all that shit, you know. And while they were in there operating me, they took my gallbladder out, but they couldn't finish the full bypass, so they only did a partial. Now, I come out of the hospital, and I did real good. I lost the weight, but there's some things that you don't know about the gastric bypass that 
everybody's like, oh man, it's the greatest surgery ever. Well, there's a few things that you don't know. One is, when you eat, you have to eat like five small meals a day. I'm not talking about plate, I mean little, little tiny ass saucers. You can't eat for so much. And if you do, your stomach's gonna stretch, you're just gonna get fat again. Or you can split open and really cause yourself a lot of problems. Well, I developed what they call the dumping syndrome. You all watch me in the videos when I, I tell you about my shit, my pants and stuff like that. That's because, because of the gastric bypass surgery, I got what they call the dumping syndrome. Dumping syndrome is where the food is going into your small intestines and filling up your pockets so quick and the acids and everything. Well, anyway, 30 minutes after you eat, you shit. And you could be pooping for 15, 20 times in one day. You could be in the store doing something and all of a sudden it hits you, you got to find a bathroom. And it's no fun. I, I've dealt with it for years. And I pretty much had it under control. But I forgot something about my operation. You live, the, I back up, you eat to live. Most people live to eat. So I really didn't care about eating so much. I, I might eat a little bit here and there. I eat very little. You know, you, you have to give up all sugars. You have to give up all fried foods. Uh, you got to give up all gaseous foods. That don't leave a whole lot. You can eat, you can eat pasta and rice and, and proteins and stuff like that, but just a small amount of time. I really am telling you this because I, I got a lot of you youngers that are, I hear y'all, I read some of your stuff and y'all talking about getting the gastric bypass. Think hard about it, youngers. That surgery can't fuck you up. I don't care what they say. Sure, I lost the weight. I came down from 850 pounds to, you know, 200. My lowest was 229. I'm back up to like 235. So, you know, you do lose the weight. But the consequences are so great. Because you, you can't go out and eat no more. It's hard to socialize, you know, when you're out with a bunch of guys and, or with a bunch of friends and everybody's sitting around drinking beer and eating pizza and you're like, well, I'll have a Diet Coke and give me, give me a piece of crack crust, you know? Your whole lifestyle changes. You come out better if you fall out of love with food. And I've kind of fucked up lately and I, I've had a lot of problems. But see, I, I've, got, I've got the dumping syndrome. I don't have a gallbladder anymore. And they don't tell you, but a lot of times when you get stomach surgery like that, you can pick up a bug that is like the dumping syndrome, and stuff is worse. And I, I, I believe that's what I got because the doctor was putting me on on a thousand milligrams of antibiotics a day. I just couldn't afford it anymore, so I'm suffering. So what the reason I'm doing this video because I want to tell you, youngers that are, that are overweight. And they start talking to you about the gastric, uh, gastric bypass. Ask questions. Find out what can happen. Find out what the results can be. Know what's going to happen. They don't tell you that when you wake up, you're going to have a bunch of tubes coming out of you, little balls and stuff that's going to be taking, like drainage balls. That, that if, if it falls off, they don't tell you, you know, you fucking fan out, you know, oh my God, this bulb fell off. It ain't no big deal. I had one on me, I had two on me, and they were drainage balls. And I called the doctor, doctor, the balls, the, the drainage balls fell off. What do I got to do? Do I need to come back to the hospital? No, no, it'll be all right. Just put something over it to sop up your, the fluids. That was simple. Went and got me some Kotex off the damn store. Tape them to my stomach. <laughs> I guess my stomach was having a period. But a lot of y'all see that scar on my stomach, and that's nothing, you know. So if any of you think about the gastric bypass, think long and hard. Try to lose the weight on your own. 
so so I would if I had to redo it today I wouldn't have it done I'd go a different way with it anyway youngins if you think about the gastric bypass just think about it don't do it until you know all the facts do you know exactly what it can can can, call, can, can happen from it I'll see you all in the next one bye what's going on you guys pickle boy here and first of all excuse how I look I know I look terrible Usually I always look terrible, but I look extremely terrible tonight because it's late, I was going to go to sleep, and a friend of ours, Eddie Bird, tells me that he had a, he found a video of Dad on a camera that he has that Dad recorded back in 2012. And so I said, yo, send it to me. And he sends me the video. And it's something that I've never seen before. I'm not sure if it's uploaded on here or not. But it's a video dad bed, dad, excuse my line, I can't talk tonight. It's a video dad did back at the old trailer before he got divorced. It's a vlog he did about people and relationships and it may have been uploaded here. I checked previously, I didn't see it, so I decided I'm going to upload it tonight. This is a video dad did back in 2012, about a month before his divorce. So, here you guys go. I know it's not easy. Giving up your heart. I know it's not easy. Giving up your heart. Nobody's perfect. I ain't perfect. I guarantee you that. It's five o'clock in the morning, youngins, and I'm sitting here going through my inbox. Normally, there's a bunch in there. It's a, it's a quiet day, I guess. Only 90 something, you know. Who cares? But you know, I'm getting a lot of the same things. And as every day, it's, it's all you young as man, you, you're hurting, you know, and life ain't treating you fair, and you're lonely. I'm getting a lot of lonely questions today, so I'm gonna address that. Yeah, Grandpa gets lonely. Y'all like, Grandpa, you ever get lonely? Do you know what it's like? All your fans and, and youngins, and they all, let me tell you something. We all get lonely. We all wonder what the what the fuck are we doing, you know? You know, you, you got you got yourself a, a little sweetie, you know, or a honey or something, you know, and you like talking with them, and, but you can't all the time, you know. And, but you don't want to go days without talking. You don't want to, you know, how to put this? Hmm. Talking. You, got, you know, you want to talk to him. You know, so yeah, you know, Grandpa feels lonely. You know, I, I, lately, man, I don't have anybody I've been talking, you know, that I've been talking with. And it drove me crazy. And then I got thinking, well, I'm getting a rest, you know. But that ain't the point either. The point is, where well, I'm different from y'all, you know, my, my relationship probably ain't, you know, ain't worth a fuck either. You know, I've been. You know, I'd be divorced here pretty soon, you know, and 31 years of marriage, and this is all new to me. You know, back in the day, man, Grandpa could talk some shit. Man, ain't no lie. I still can talk shit. But why? Why not just be honest and put it all out there to people that they either like it or they don't, you know what I'm saying? I know you people are lonely out there. I know there's a lot of y'all hurt. You don't have anybody. But you know, you gotta find solitude in that. You know, you gotta say, hey, but I'm a good person. You know, I, 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 somebody's out there for me. And you'll find if you keep looking. I swear to God you will. Hey, youngins. How the hell y'all doing? It is so cold here this, the other morning. I ain't lying. It was so damn cold that I was outside and I farted and the vapors came through my britches and when they reached the outside air they froze had a big block of fart vapors fall to the floor to the ground and the, I guess the bad part is is I had to actually take that block of fart let it fall out before I could smell it Ugh. That was a wet, bleh. anyway, anyway, youngins, 
y'all nominated me for this shorty award and I am so honored and I so don't like this Michael fuck this one grandpa here man I, I am so happy <clears throat> you youngins do more for me than I could ever do for y'all Y'all youngins recommended me for what they call what that was a a, a horse a, 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 a oh man damn I got screwed this one up y'all <laughs> y'all 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 wanted me to have a wiki page so you give me one y'all wanted me to be YouTuber of the year for the Charleston City Paper last year y'all made it for me. It seems like you youngers just never cease to amaze me on what y'all do for me. I, I could never, I, I could, oh damn, I screwed this one up. God damn it! Y'all have nominated me for this Shorty Award. You know, I know I ain't gonna get it. You know, I ain't, nobody knows me. I ain't nobody. But you youngers nominated me. And that means more to me than winning anything. I mean... That just means so much that y'all would take your time out y'all schedule and actually go to a Twitter, Twitter, a twi Twitter. That's it, Twitter. I think. Anyway, to go there and and, and 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 do all that and nominate me and vote for me for this thing. My God, man! You know what that does to me, old man like me, youngest. I want to thank y'all so much for voting for me. Um, and I'll probably come in last, but you know, I don't care if I come in last. Just knowing that y'all, y'all did this to me, that y'all, that y'all nominated and you voted and, 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 and you made me feel good. You made an old man's day. So once again, young, I just want to thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that y'all do, for everything. If it wasn't for you, my youngins, who knows, man? I, I, you know, I, I, I'd probably still be old fat man Charlie Green in the trailer park going crazy. I am not going crazy. I'm not a crazy person. And you better not ever accuse me of being crazy because I'm not goddamn crazy. But thank you anyway, youngins, for what you do. And thank you for voting for me. I love each and every one of y'all. I'll see you on the next Grandpa's Corner. It's New Year's Eve. And you know, Grandpa, he's going to Charlie Brown Seafood to get him some oysters. And he's going to go get him some, some crab. Grandpa loves him oysters. Right now, I'm in a liquor store. He wouldn't even liquor store. Ah. It says liquor store. That's the place I want to be right now. How you doing? Good, how are you, sir? Anyway, young, oh my God, look at him. Damn, fireball. Boy, I bet that shit's good. Damn nice looking liquor store. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that fireball lights you up. I bet it would. Bye. You doing all right? Y'all ready for a big new year? Yes, sir. How about yourself? I tell you, man. Let's see. Sir, from, out of curiosity, are you pricing me or are you just uh... No, nah, I'm using your liquor. I'll buy some liquor. Okay. All right. All right. Man, want to know why I got my camera and he's in a pricing. Well, we got the best prices around anyway, just to let you know. What's the name of the liquor store? B&L Liquor, sir. B&L Liquor? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, anyway, I want to get... How you doing, man? My, yeah, my name's Charlie. Bobby. Bobby. Yes, sir. How long you been in business here, Bobby? About 13 years, sir. Wow, that's a long time. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. What can I help you find? I want to get some Kentucky, I don't know, some bourbon. I want some bourbon. I want a pint. You want you want Tennessee liquor or Kentucky? Kentucky. Jim Beam's a good one. Jim Beam. All right, I'll give you a Jim Beam. Okay. Can I see your ID, sir? See my what? Your ID. You're kidding, right? No, sir, I'm not. Do I look like I'm, do I look like I'm 121? Sir, it's, it's, it's state law. We have to, we require ID. I ain't got no ID. Well, if you want to purchase a bottle, you're going to have to show me your ID, sir. I'm, I'm a bottle. Hey, I want no, a bottle. Sir. Give me no, a bottle. No, I want a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> I need you, to you see your ID. You can get it ID. You laughing at me, Bobby? No, sir. No, sir, I'm not. I'm not. It's just our procedure, sir. 
But I ain't, I, I, I left mine eating out. I'm sorry, then you're not gonna be able to purchase this or estate law. Sorry. But you don't understand, I won't. Wait a minute, we'll put it back up here. Put it back up here. Let me, let me, let me see if I can find it, okay? Hang on a second. Yes, sir. Do you have someone with you with an ID? No, I ain't got no one with me. I look, did I kill it with anybody? You know what? I don't know. Let me see here. I ain't got nobody. Here, here, here. Thank you. Thank you. No, no sir. Yeah, I got it. 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 All right, thank you. Look at What's the name of the store again? B and L Liquor, sir. Thank you got to admit, man. You got to get. You can't blame somebody following the law. So, y'all have a y'all have a nice New Year's. I'll, I'll see you back. All right. Thank you. Happy New Year. Michael and I had a big argument, and I cut his whoopie doo. I whipped his ass. When was this? You were about 12, 11, 12 years I old. I remember. All of a sudden, man, it, I, I, it was time for supper, and I didn't send him to his room. Tell him, don't come out that room no goddamn time tonight. So I went to Michael's room to get him because he ain't come up. So we called, Michael! Trough is up! Suey, suey, suey! Michael wouldn't come. That's true, he would really do that. Hey, I would do that. Wee! Wee! Soup's on, fat boy! Hey, hey. yo, and I used to call up for supper. Wee! <laughs> Wee! I did. I know, that's the truth. I said, Michael! <laughs> Jesus, man, I'm done. <laughs> Michael wouldn't get wouldn't answer. Turns out that's just that struggling to breathe. So I went looking for him. Michael fucking ran away. <laughs> he tied he up two pair of drawers and his shoes. The only two pair I had left, probably. And I went looking for him. I couldn't find him. Two or three hours ago, I know Michael. Get worried now, here it's like nine o'clock at night, no Michael. I was that goddamn little bastard. Where the fuck is he at? Ended up having to call the police at midnight. <laughs> the goddamn police, they came and they looked at my house. They said, Mr. Green, we need, after we find him, we have to have a talk. I said, fuck. So they, they out looking at me, all of a sudden we got the first responders, we got the fire department. We got the goddamn highway patrol. We got the goddamn police of Gaston. We must have 50, 60 people, neighbors, everybody looking for Michael. Never found Michael till about three o'clock in the morning. Michael was behind the house on top of the shed, watching everything. <laughs> Never made a sound. <laughs> The goddamn, and who found him? The neighbor was looking out the window in her backyard and seen some movement on top of the damn shed, thought it was a goddamn prowler and called the police. <laughs> so the police run to the goddamn house. We understand there's, a, there's somebody on top of your roof. Fucking Michael. I was hiding under a blanket. Found his ass on top. Oh my God, man. They threatened to put him in DJJ. They threatened to get him in middle. They told me to get him in middle health. I was screaming like a monkey. I remember. Michael, ooh, ah! <laughs> Let me do the face. No, oh, you gotta see this face, Michael. You do. I was going. <laughs> but Michael ran away from home. It, it took us like the, about twelve hours, and he's on top of the roof. They don't. They don't been to the guy. They don't been to the top of the water tower. They done checked the bottom of the pool at the, at the school. I remember at one point, Dad came in the backyard and started crying while he was smoking. And I was just watching. <laughs> <laughs> I was a real piece of shit. I'm telling you. <clears throat> but that wasn't the only time he ran away. Oh, yeah. There was another time, and it was about Amanda. Enough about this shit. We lived in Leesville then. And he figured he didn't. He, I'm not living in the house with Charlie anymore. <laughs> he stole my girlfriend, and I don't have anybody to anymore to love me. He just didn't do it. <laughs> oh, no. oh my God! I said, "Son, you'll find a girl one day." No, I won't, Daddy. I just I can't live here anymore. 
and he left. Told Charlie, you son of a bitch, you stole this woman and you go find his ass and bring him home. Fuck him, daddy. Oh, I said, you son of a bitch, go find your goddamn brother. No. So. All of a sudden, heard the goddamn dogs. My neighbor had a bunch of hound dogs, right? Motherfuckers had goddamn Michael pinned in a fucking tree. <laughs> he ran away with the dogs, got after his ass. They run him up a goddamn pine tree. Michael, Daddy, get these goddamn dogs. They're going to beat me Those up. They should have been put in a cage or something. But Michael, never forget his face. I can't live without Amanda. Oh. <laughs> You know, I don't watch videos, but, but, I go on my Facebook. What do I see? The first time I met Angry Grandpa by Bridget West! I remember that first time I met you! Did I like you? Hell nah! You weren't talking about my house of runch! Those were Michael's pets! Because Michael fed them! Michael would eat the damn room! So he was feet and leave that man. I go in there and clean his room, right? And 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 there'd be plates on the floor with food that had been there for a motherfucking month. Yeah, the goddamn roaches. They weren't. They were getting fat and full and pregnant. Ah. But Miss Bridget. I don't even know how to even respond. You were talking about me, and I was rude. And you were, little princess, oh, little Miss Bridget. Ha, 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 I knew you win. I remember them days, Bridget. I remember them days like they were yesterday. Damn near it was yesterday. You come trotting your little ass up to my house. Hi, Michael. I like you, Michael. I love Michael. Ha! You know, I don't even know where to go with this. You, 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 why are you talking about my trailer? My trailer was paid for! Michael, you ain't even take up your daddy on that video! Bridget West. Let me see. Where do I begin? Where do I begin? Okay. Little Bridget West came to my house one day. She walked in. Ain't say hi, goodbye, kiss my ass, nothing. Her and Michael trip back to the room. They stayed in that room. Never came out of that room. I make it my business. I, I keep a respectable house. You gonna be in my house, it gonna be respectable. If it ain't respectable, you ain't gonna be in my house. I keep a, a, a yeah, y'all know grandpa. Grandpa's not mean. Grandpa ain't hard or, or nasty to nobody. Grandpa love everybody. Is that you, Bridget West? Wow. I haven't been back here in a long time. This was once a thriving community. There were, every space had a trailer in it. Yes, in case y'all don't recognize it, this is Trailhood! 
Thanks to Boeing, Trailwood no longer exists. Thank you, Boeing. Thank you. Ah, uh, goddamn! I even got name, got name of them damn people. True Lux. Thank you, True Lux. You ruined a lot of lives. You ruined a lot of lives by what you did here. Wow, there is nothing here anymore. Man. Hey, youngest, and your grandpa here. Thought I'd just ride through the community once for the last, I guess for the last time, because, you know, people bought this place and over a thousand people was displaced and got no homes now. And, well, they got homes now, I know they do. But I lost a lot of money, like me. My home was paid for. All I was paying was lot rent. I went from paying $310 a month to paying over $900. That's a lot of goddamn money! Our governor, she's watching out for the people of South Carolina. She watching out for Boeing. Oh, and Boeing, I heard a story. I heard the reason why y'all don't get those, uh, the new plane here in Charleston is because the, 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 the factory here wasn't done to the planes right. You were having to send them to, uh, to Washington State to get them fixed right. You know, good. I'm glad. Man. Y'all remember this street? Y'all remember this driveway? This is where the old trailer was. God, man. Here's where I bought Michael's first camera. Right here is where Tina's daddy died. Thank you, True Luck. I want, True Lux, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart of making me lose my home. I want to thank you so much that you took greed and money over human lives. Thank you, Governor, for lying your ass off. You stand, or don't you remember what you said at the, at the at Republican National uh, thing? Maybe I can refresh your goddamn memory! You turn your back on the people of South Carolina, just like the goddamn True Lux turned their back on families. True Lux didn't care about families, True Lux cared about money. Greed. Anyway, I gotta leave here because I see a cop coming, so I gotta go. But I'll, I'm still gonna take the film here. Man, oh man. Had some good times this trailer park. I'm probably not gonna come back in here anymore because every time I come in here, I get kind of misty eyed. This is where my kids were little at and they played. They went to school down here. Now it's just one big open field. Hell, I remember on, what, a San, San Diego there, or San Domingo there, or some shit like that. All the Mexicans would get out here, boy, and they'd play soccer over here in the field. And they, they'd drink their Coronas, and hell, they even shared, man, hell. Young as I'm leaving, I'm leaving now. So, Y'all take care. And this is the last you'll see of Trailwood. Bye, youngins.